Welcome back. Where you been, Tom? Thank you for coming in. It, it's 7 o'clock, so we're going to start the meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Danny, second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this is the amended um, agenda, which has a 2A on it, just so everybody is uh, on the right one. So we'll jump right into two, which is um, the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins here this evening? No walk-ins, I don't see anybody. So we'll move on to 2A, which is um, a discussion about special election, changing the date for the annual town meeting and the polling hours for elections. The town clerk. Hello, gentlemen. Good How are evening. you? Kath. Let's see. Let me start off. Um, the Secretary of State's office um, has scheduled two special elections to replace <coughs> Senator John Kerry. The special state primary will be held on Tuesday, April 30th, 2013, and the special state election will be held on Tuesday, June 25th, 2013. Um, the guidelines for that are if our town election, our scheduled town election, falls within the 30 day, 30 days of either one of those elections, we are able to combine the elections, okay, merge them. It would be two separate ballots, two separate check-in and check-out books, and it'd be treated as two elections at the same venue, same polling place, rather, and um, it is recommended. Other towns are doing it. Uh, I have Norwell and Cohasset. Their town meeting is on May 11th. Um, they are moving theirs to the state primary as well. We don't qualify to move it to the June election. The new legislature that the House and the state has accepted, uh, or the uh, House and the Senate has accepted, mm -hmm. is uh, it overrides the charter and the bylaw. So that, there's no so problem. So we are able to do it. We are able to do it. The only, there's only a couple of little issues. And one issue that would prevent us from doing it if there was a, um, an article at town meeting that would put a question on the ballot, which I've been assured that there isn't. And the other thing that it's not a problem, it's just a little inconvenience, is the time frame for candidates to take out their nomination papers and get them back because that has changed to uh, February 27th by 5 p.m. in our office. That's when we need to receive the signatures for certification. Okay, and you have to have 100 certified by that date by 5 p.m. So um, that's the only thing. So does it move it earlier or later? It's moving it well, one earlier. Earlier. earlier to April 30th instead of May 18th. So everything moves earlier. Everybody, everything moves all earlier. All the dates, mm -hmm. certification dates, all those. Voter registration, everything. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So can you just explain, you said there's going to be actually two separate elections. So if, if when John goes to vote, he's going to get one ballot, he's going to have to run through, then no. come back out again? No. What happens is, is you have a check-in book for the town meeting and a check-in book for the special primary. John Dan, he's going to come in. And he's going to say, you know, this is my address. And the checkers will say, are you voting in both elections? Meanwhile, both of them have looked him up in the books. They should be on their pages. This is all pending a training session, because I'm going to have to have a training session. And um, if he says, yes, I'm voting in both elections, they'll say, well, here's your ballot for the town primary, and they'll check him off, I mean, for the town election. And then they'll say, what ballot are you taking for the primary? And he'll tell them, and they'll mark it in the book and they will give him the appropriate ballot. He will go in, vote his ballots, and check out the same way he checked in, and feed them individually into the machines. The machines can be programmed to read two separate ballots, as long as they're cut the same shape, size, what have you. And um, it's basically, yeah, two elections, but you can go through at one time with your ballots. So yeah. just, just a quick overview. Typically, it would have been on May 18th. Correct. We're looking to move it forward 18 days to April 30th. Correct. Because we can, because it's within 30 days of the, per the state bylaw. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is that anyone that's running for any offices has to get their paperwork in by February 27th at 5 o'clock. And papers are available now, and they can call my office ahead of time, and I can have them ready for them so they don't have to stand in the office and wait for me to go make copies and what have you. Um, it is a cost savings to the town, um, you know, not <coughs> huge savings, but it's a few thousand dollars. Right. How, mu how much? 
a few thousand, at least between 3,500 and 4,000, I would estimate. You're not saving on printing and programming costs for the election machines and the ballots, but you are saving on um, custodial fees, uh, food costs for the election workers. You're saving on about a dozen, about a dozen election worker salary, which is about $2,000, and. Um, the other thing. It was something else, but it's about 35. Yeah, that's actually that. John just wrote a note saying asking that. So that's great. Um, any discussion? Sounds good. No discussion at all. If not, then we are looking for a motion. Um, move the door. Move the board select and vote to change the date of the annual town election from Saturday, May 18th, 2013, to Tuesday, April 30th. 2013, according to the request of the town clerk. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Any discussion from the floor? Seeing none. From the board? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Um, all against? None. So it's 300. Zero. Zero. Excuse me, 301. Uh, move the board select and vote to set the polling hours for the Tuesday, April 30th, 2013 special state primary and annual town election from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. abstains. Great. And the third one we don't have to do because that's all you need from us, right? I believe so. That's Great. Thank you I very think that'll much. work out best for everybody. Get there mm -hmm. one day, get it taken care of, and save some money. Lots of training, but we'll get it, we'll get it done. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank, Thank you. So let's move on to item number three, which is an interfund advance borrowing. <coughs> Treasurer Collector. Yeah. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Okay. What do you got for us? Okay. So on the April 13, 2009 town meeting, Article 4, Item C, the sewer extension, was authorized in the amount of $6,400,000. Uh, to date, 600, uh, 711, excuse me, thousand of the balance has been unissued. I've consulted with uh, Al Bangor, and he's going to need uh, 311,000 for fiscal 13 to finish up the project. So, uh, in accordance to Mass General Law, I would like to uh, borrow this money, 311,000 for the stabilization fund, and we'll do a bond before fiscal 13 year end. And this will wrap up the project completely? Oh. And this is the Musquashka Pond area? That's correct. So we'll have 400000 Cost savings. Cost savings. Yeah. Great. Any questions from the board? No. Motion. Motion, please. Move the board to select and vote to temporarily borrow the sum of $311,000 from the stabilization fund to be used for Article 4C as permitted by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. One quick note. This is a... Um, a betterment. So this is not coming from the taxpayers. This is coming from the users, and right. um, it's just a borrowing from the stabilization that'll be repaid. Correct. Great. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Four to zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Um, now we'll get into <sighs> Article Number Four. Let's see, and budget review. Budget review. Is there any? There's no one here for anything quick, is there? Uh, no. uh, Mark is here for the water. Everybody's waste. here. Joe's here for shellfish. And, uh, okay. Why don't we start with Joe, Joe. on the shellfish budget? Yep. Here you go. How are you? Good seeing you. It's number 295. 295 in your handle. Let's get there. Um, what we typically do is just have you read your mission and let the seven people watching know <coughs> what you do. Our shellfish department is uh, here to foster, protect, and preserve the town's shellfishing resources and habitats and make sure that we're in accordance with federal, state, and the local statutes and regulations. Uh, great. And I guess I'll just run through the numbers real quick, then we'll open up to the board. Um, it is the exact same appropriation as last year, so there's no new personnel, there's no new expenses. It's $11,789 was appropriated in fiscal year 13, and the same is for fiscal year 14. Why don't we just 
Actually, if you was one change, I think. Yeah, okay. the budget's up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked at the requested. Yeah. Um, so it did actually go up about two or three hundred dollars. So the uh, recommended amount is twelve thousand fifty-five dollars, and that went up for supplies. No, just and personal services. Yeah, and a little bit of personal Joe's services. Joe's stipend went up for the first time since I've been here. So. Right. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> any, uh, well, that any changes everything. <laughs> just Joe, just out of curiosity, is is there any? I don't want to say tentative or tentative plan, but concept of maybe trying to expand shell fishing to um, North Situate beyond the um, to mine it, you know, into the other harbor, uh, Situate's property towards Cohasset Harbor. That area actually is open. It is. There's no resource there. There's one area in the creeks behind it that was loaded this summer, but theoretically that's polluted. That's what? Polluted? Part of the state. But there was one area that was just... Is that polluted because of just all those houses fertilizers were, and... All those houses are in ledge and none of those septic systems really filter very well. I only ask that because it's a great area for the future and something it conservation is, yeah. can take a look at. and. And, and, you know, the, the only problem it. with that as far as trying to expand it as far as aquaculture goes is that that thing just gets scoured with northeasters. And so the... It shifts out every yeah. time. I got you. Where are you talking, John, on the river? Oh, yes. Paul, oh Cohasset Harbor, but primarily a lot of that is situate owned. Well, and so the break, it yeah. stops the breakwater, really. Gotcha. Just curious, mm -hmm. you know. How was this season? I know we weren't closed as much as I no, think we were. We weren't closed as much, but we closed a week early because Red Tide again came in, uh, which is unfortunate. I know they're working on trying to expand the season, maybe opening it up a little bit earlier in the fall, because it stinks. December 1st is the first year. Well, it's too cold to go clamming. Right. Great. Well, um, as Joe's mentioned in the prior meetings, we're not voting the budgets tonight. We're just hearing them, and we'll tally it all up at the end and then make sure it it ties and then Trisha will do her magic to make sure it ties and and then we'll vote it all in a later meeting. So Rick, did you have I a actually did have a quick question because uh, you talk about in the future risks about the uh, thirteen foot Boston whaler. Um we resolve that with the half masses department. Thank you. Done. I was gonna suggest you talk to the harbor masters department, but as usual you're okay. step ahead. Took care of it. It's all, all right. it'll be in good shape. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Joe, thank you, Joe. Good job. Thank you. Uh, the next one up is administration, 149. I may have a lot of questions, Mr. Chair. <laughs> well, you too, John. Can I go first? I wouldn't let anyone off easy. <laughs> Ms. Manning, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Do you want to read your mission statement? Sure. The role of the Town Administrator's Office is to provide services to residents in a professional, courteous, and timely manner, and also to work cooperatively with municipal employees, elected officials, and board and committee members, resolving problems and implementing policies and procedures. Great. And before I open it up, I'll just run through the numbers real quick. Last year's appropriation was 89000 This year's is uh, 90000 And... Um, the majority of the stuff in this budget are, are expenses that I think you must allocate out because it's like the telephone for everybody. It's uh, technical services, which I assume is copying machine and, and the sort of maintenance stuff on that, um, and then training. So this is really a, a, a department budget where we put things that I think affect more than just the department of two that you mm -hmm. are. Um, any, any questions from, from the board? Well, I'll speak for the board. I think you do a wonderful job. I think uh, I know that the communication between us is very good between you and Kim, um, you know, taking care of it all the time. And and uh, people don't know, but that office gets it's like the first stop for people that have a problem. <laughs> they come in there looking to get it resolved. And I've seen you, you know, firsthand deal with that stuff in a professional manner. So, so I think you do a great job. Um, great. So if there's no questions, then we'll move on to the next one. And Thanks for coming in. Okay. Thanks, Sheila. Yep. Um, the next one is number 66, which is uh, the Waterways Enter Enterprise Fund. Mark, how are you? 
Right, thank you. Let's get to the back of our booklet. Dick, how are you? Very well, thank you. you? Good. Good. Uh, just for those of you watching that don't understand, uh, the town has five enterprise funds, and they are all um, self-sufficient or self-operating uh, entities. So they they take in revenue and they have their own expenses, and it's really paid for by the users of the functionality. And the waterways is exactly what it says. It's the harbor and the usage of um, of our of our harbor resources. And the harbor master is here to explain it to us. Uh, thank you. Um, um, my name is Mark Patterson. I'm the Central Harbor Master. Uh, with me tonight is Dick Eckhouse, Chairman of the City of Waterways uh, Commission. The mission uh, of the Harbor Master's Office, in accordance with the City of Waterways Management Plan, City of Marine Rules and Regulations, and Town Bylaws, is to ensure the safety of the boating public, to preserve and promote order among vessels that habitually moor or transit City of Waterways, to maintain and enhance town owned maritime facilities while protecting the integrity of the harbor as a natural resource and to defray the cost of providing those services through the assessment of fees. Great. And uh, Tricia just handed us your really operating budget um, with the revenue and the expenditures in it. Um, I'll just, Rick, you're the liaison to this. Um, is there anything that you want to say before we dive into anything? Uh, the only thing I just want to thank you, Mr. Chair, is just draw attention to the fact that things have been expanding tremendously down there uh, in the harbor with the boat yard and a whole bunch of other things going on. As you know, they're undertaking a renovation of the pier, the commercial fishing pier, and so on. And so the, the responsibilities, I've been on the board now for seven years. I've seen the responsibilities in the harbor master's office probably double easily and so it's remarkable that they're able to achieve what they do obviously I, I know quite a bit what's going on but if you look under mr. Patterson and mr. Eckhouse's summary of departmental accomplishments you can see for example they've awarded three hundred seventy five thousand dollars in separate grants and so on so in addition to the enterprise fund operating as you just articulated they're also very aggressive in seeking additional state support uh, to help defray these costs um, to the community Okay. Um, uh, and, yeah. um, Mark or Tricia, can with the um, shifting of positions with the assistant harbor master, where does you know I, I saw it in the um, personnel services? Are you leaving that same amount of money there? To, and, and then I've had people stop me on the street. And any any idea when you might be? in that position I know there was some reclassifications or something yeah. like that Mark. the job has been posted okay um, so it can be found on the town's website um, in fiscal year 2013 um, there was discussion about um, creating an additional position and that's our an increase in personal services um, we went back and forth with some discussion about structuring etc um, and it was determined that um, the time was not right to fill that position so we are back really now to FY 12 levels um, minus contractual obligations and that sort of thing right so is there money to put someone in that position yes all right good yep, that money is in all personnel right. good all right so mark uh, if you can just expand on that a little bit I see that the assistant harbor master is in your budget Yes. But that the uh, personnel regular salaries line still dropped <clears throat> about fifty thousand dollars. Yes. So what what did we eliminate? Um, what you'll see for the FY fourteen request is something that's more in line with FY twelve appropriation. In FY thirteen, there was a discussion of adding another employee. That's what. So that was the increase. We decided not to do that. <coughs> so really, um, there was never actually a change in the organization or the number of people there. There was a discussion that we set money aside to um, fill if it was decided. It wasn't, and now we're back to our original level. So we had a position we were thinking about doing. We appropriated the money for it, but we correct never filled the position. So there's no layoffs, same personnel, same level of services as yes. in the past. Um, as, as Mr. Harris just said, um, he'd heard about some reorganizations reclassifications and that ties in with my earlier point about the nature of the operation of the harbor master's office has changed so much in the last decade that um, really 
uh, Mark and Tricia and I was involved a bit, needed to take a, a look at what the duties were of the harbor master as written down and the duties of the proposed assistant harbor master as written down to make sure responsibilities were parsed, mm -hmm. that there was sufficient duplication. So when Mark's otherwise occupied, the assistant harbor master is obviously the ranking individual. Make sure there's enough overlap, but also that um, including management aspects and other components that just weren't there previously. Um, when you read those job descriptions are, are an integral part um, of the responsibility of the harbor master and the assistant harbor master. Um, well, no, after you, just. Well, I was just gonna run through the expenses. I see John's highlight of the revenue, I'll let him do that. But just uh, last year we appropriated a million 108 to the budget. And this year's recommendation is a million oh twenty one, so it's down <clears throat> about eighty thousand dollars. The majority of it is what Mark just um, expressed, and then there's also, you know, a large component of the budget is debt and interest from all the um, expenditures that they made, and that in the out years will go down every year, and it's gone, gone down almost twenty thousand dollars. So um, I remember when we looked at the capital plan ten years ago when I was on the advisory committee; it looked really tight in these out years, and you've done a good job managing it. Um, yeah, just with revenue, it looks like, Mark, um, this year you're projecting um, uh, 1, 1, 31,000. Um, it's less than it was, uh, it's more than um, the revenue from last year, um, and it's a little less than FY12, and certainly um, uh, it's more than FY11. So it seems like, you know, you're, you're projecting more revenue this year as opposed to the past uh, Past year, so hopefully, uh, how do you, how do you, what are you anticipating? In other words, do you think uh, that things people are going to be um, using more? Uh, well, I think that the, the projection um, of a million thirty-one um, is actually down a little bit um, from FY twelve, which was a million forty-four, um, and down a, a, a little bit more considerably from FY eleven. FY eleven was sort of an anomaly year. Um, we took in $50,000 from the premium of sale of bonds, and we also sold a lot of surplus floats. Um, so that took <laughs> that up a little bit. Um, what we did not carry into FY14 uh, from FY12, which is the last complete fiscal year that we have numbers for, um, was uh, grant money for the pump-out boat and interest on earnings. Interest on earnings is kind of something that we can't um, necessarily be guaranteed of. Um, and with a discussion with the town accountant, um, we've decided to move grants into another category. The, the money is still there. It's still an, a stream of revenue coming in. It's just being um, tallied somewhere else. Um, so our, our, our revenues are about online. Uh, slip fees, mooring fees, user fees, town peer fees. Um, some of the bigger ticket items are running. A, uh, we project that those will be running about the same as last year. Sean, did you? I was just going to ask, Mark, what's your opinion on fees as far as slips, you know, with our marinas versus the private ones. Are you happy where we are? Are we, you know, you know, very low, too low? You like where we are? I think um, I think we deliver an outstanding product for, oh, the, the, for um, You do, without a doubt. For the fee that we're charging. Um, our fees are, uh, for residents, are lower than um, the private marinas in town. Our fees for non-residents are a little bit more in line with what some of the private marinas are charging, but still on the low end. Um, I think that the market would bear an increase, uh, but again, being an enterprise fund and, and you know the nature and definition of enterprise funds is that the amount of money um, charged for the service is to offset the cost of providing the service and putting away enough money to um, account for unforeseen things, but not necessarily to make as much money as humanly possible. Um, and again, that's just, um, that's what enterprise funds are. Could we widen the gap a little bit? I not with the local residents, but out of town. Um, I know that I know we have to keep it close, correct? But yeah, I, th I think that we I think that it should be kept relatively close. I think that it's um, certainly legitimate to charge situate residents less than we charge non-residents. Um, again, you know, based on what I see and on what other marinas, private marinas are charging, and um, given the services that I think that we provide. Uh, I suspect that the market would certainly bear an increase, um, but that would that would probably be the result of uh, many discussions with the Waterways right. Commission, the Harbor Master, and uh, liaison uh, Marley, <coughs> as well as the rest of the board. Yep. Could I about? address a little, bit, a little bit of that? One of the things that Mark has been very successful at is the free cash, 
And uh, right now, it's increasing slowly. So the idea of charging more when you're still showing good free cash doesn't make a lot of sense to the voters. I don't disagree with your point. I'm just simply saying you don't want to see it. It was very large a few years back. I can't remember how many, maybe four or five. It was over a million. And <clears throat> that was something that we've taken and we're adjusting, uh, working with Mark, and he's doing a great job on that. I just didn't want to be the discount marina. You know, yeah, the, but part. you know the other That's thing. I mean, you raise a really good point. But the other thing is, is we do work hard. I mean, not only in in situ, but if you look at the 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 slip pressure throughout all the coastal communities, it gets pricey real fast. And 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 Mark and Dick and have worked real hard at making sure that not only is it a good product, but it's affordable for the person that's got. 26 foot Grady White or and whatever. It's, and it's three months a year. You know, three months a year. So the, the regular person, if you will, can go out and get it. We could increase it so we had a fewer number of slips and they were all 40 footers. And yes, we'd make more money, but that's not servicing the needs of the community. I think another thing, um, trying to keep in the back of my mind is during the last, you know, s seven or eight years, uh, as Rick alluded to, we've made a number of um, big scale. Uh, improvements in infrastructure. We have a brand new launching ramp. Um, the Situ Marine Park has been developed. We have new docks over there. We've done several dredging projects. We've done dredging in the, the rivers. Um, we're rehabilitating the town pier. Um, perhaps a, a couple of other things that I may have missed. Fortunately, we've been able to offset the cost of those capital projects um, with about two and a quarter million dollars in grants uh, over the last five or six years. Had not been for that, I suspect we probably would have been having the discussion about fees a lot sooner. Good. Yep. Yeah, just one comment. I mean, I think Sean brings up a good point. I mean, you've got revenue coming in at a million thirty, and expenses at about a million twenty. So there's a ten thousand dollar surplus, which is great. But for capital plans and maintenance of the, of the wear and tear of the docks and all that sort of stuff, you know, that's <coughs> why we accumulate the free cash so it doesn't come in one year, and all of a sudden we have a, you know, we have a $200,000 expense with a $10,000 surplus and we have to increase. But you've done a great job doing that. Um, you know, that's that's why we would, you know, try and accumulate it for, for the unforeseen and for the things you know you have to do. Um, yeah. yeah, just one question, Mark or Dick. You know, I mentioned this to the uh, shell fishing. Is, is there any, like, long-term plan to try to conceive or come up with maybe a plan with Cohasset Harbor? Again, I mention that because a lot of that is owned by Situate to begin with, and whether there's town land and maybe consider to expand it you know right now obviously it's not cost efficient to do it but I mean thinking long term once the harbor is taken care of whether or not to think about mooring and slips providing we have land and access to be able to get people out there is it something that at least to consider and take a look at to try to see whether it's cost efficient I think to do it's it a good idea I think, we'll it, I think that. it's a very good idea and I think it kind of touches on one of the things that um, we've looked at um, again in the past five seven years is looking at sort of regional solutions to regional problems. Um, we uh, applied for on the federal no discharge area along with uh, the towns of Marshfield and Cohasset. Yep. So the three towns, are, you know, obviously water quality is something that affects all of us. It doesn't, under, it doesn't know borders. Um, we got together, the three towns looked at that uh, regionally, applied for and were granted the no discharge designation. Um, with um, the Marshfield Harbor Master's Office, uh, for the past four years, we've um, been reseeding the shellfish beds in the North River. Um, so that program has been uh, very successful, and we're, uh, one of our objectives for this year is to expand that program. And I would love the, um, to think that someday we could expand that into uh, neighboring communities uh, and cooperate with Cohasset the way that we are with Marshfield now. Okay. Uh, two real quick <coughs> questions. Um, the Marine Park. Is that done, or what's what's on the? It, it's substantially completed. The only thing left over there, um, there's some plantings that weren't done at the end of last year because of planting seasons. Um, there is m uh, one more aspect of the park. Um, there's sort of a buffer area uh, between the park proper and the boat yard. Uh, we've got a little bit of, of, of work to do over there, um, but the rest of it, you know, infrastructure, grading, parking lot, um, the maritime center. All of those things, uh, the marina, the dredging of the basin around the marina, all complete. A ADA ramp. And there's a point. So the ramp going down there is now done. Uh, 
the ramp going down there, uh, we replaced our 30-foot ramp with a 50-foot ramp. Um, we were able to um, get that funded um, through a boating infrastructure grant. Um, we appreciate the support that we got from Situates Commission on Disability. Um, Mr. Dugan wrote a letter of support for our effort to try to um, make the area over there as accessible um, as possible to, to everybody. Uh, and so that ramp went in at the beginning of last season. And there's a beautiful walkway now. I know at one point there was a, a picture of a jetting out kind of gazebo. Is that? Yeah. It's been. Um, there, there was, you know, the, the plan was very, very elaborate and included a lot of things. Well, one of the things that was in one of the early plans was a viewing pier. Uh, that went out some hundred or so feet into the harbor. I'm not exactly sure what it was. Unfortunately, that didn't end up being part of the final plan. Right. Good. It's great. It's a great building. I know a lot of the uh, private citizens are using it. I know a lot of the uh, groups in, in town are using it, and, you know, it works out great. W one quick question. Maintenance of a lot of that, I is that under your budget, or is that, does that go to the DPW? Under the waterways budget. Waterways. I only ask that because long-term thoughts are, you know, for having more and more green space, there may be a consideration for some form of parks out, uh, I mean, outside get, of your, so I mean, well, I, it doesn't I become a party, we get party budget. Tons of, I, I, I don't mean to um, imply that we don't get a lot of support from DPW, um, highway, public ground. Oh, no, I wasn't suggesting that. I, I was just only saying if it becomes a major cost factor, that's something we need to consider for green space, yes. not just there, but elsewhere, too. So that's all. And also regarding the, the building, the Maritime Center, which is, <clears throat> which is overseen as well by the foundation as a nonprofit, so the other answer to that viewing pier question is that those plans you saw with a long viewing plan, viewing pier, were before that whole foundation and that building was even conceived. Mm -hmm. So now with that building there and it's got the beautiful deck, it pretty much serves that purpose. And the foundation does a really good job working with Mark and um, uh, holding events there and so on as well. So it's an interesting balance and relationship between the foundation on that side of things and the Harbor Master's Office. And there's been some hiccups and things as we work as we work it through, but, you know, growing pains, and it's on a really nice trajectory. I have one last request. Is there any chance that we could give a phone call to people before they lose their moorings because they missed the deadline for turning and stuff? Is there any process in place where we at least leave someone a voicemail before they find out that their slip is gone or their mooring is gone or, or that sort of stuff? Um, are you talking about mooring permities? Who are going to lose their mooring? Are you talking about more people who are on the mooring waiting list who fail to <coughs> confirm their intent to stay on the mooring waiting yeah, list? Yeah, not the waiting list so much as the people that are currently have a slot yeah. and they missed a deadline, they didn't get a check in, they didn't do something. Is there any sort of mechanism in place that says, hey, Rick Murray, uh, if you have a day? Yeah, do we do anything for that? Um, we, we, can, we can certainly look at that policy and. Um, this year we did, I'm not sure specifically what you're talking about, but um, I think we we try to do as good a job as we can in reaching out to no, people. No, no, I, sure I don't, don't think. We try not to catch anybody off guard. No, uh, um, yeah, and I, I don't know how many people come up every year, and if it's if it's a 1,000 phone calls, maybe it's too much. But I've gotten a couple of phone calls of people that have said, I missed it, I lost it, I'm back at the end of a long list now. Yeah. And obviously those aren't happy people. I don't know if there's any way to just make some sort of email or cursory effort to say, hey, yeah. think about it. I don't need an answer right now, but that's. We did do the extension. The, the waterways considered it, and with Mark's cooperation, they changed the date when it, you, it would expire, and they gave a grace period. Yeah. So yeah, if somebody missed that. it, though, they're not going to remember if they get three more days. I, no, they got a Just think 30. about it. Just think, you know, Absolutely. and we can talk about it later. <clears throat> Great. Any other questions? I know we're not voting this tonight, but. Great. Thanks for coming in and explaining. You're Always welcome. good to Thanks. see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one is 145, the Treasurer Collector. Me again. <laughs> Let us get to the right. <laughs> no. I know you what? Both, but still. I, I was going to make a comment. I was going to make and um, you can start off by reading your mission statement. The town treasurer collector is responsible for collecting, managing, and investing all town funds to provide efficient, accurate, and professional tax information and service to the taxpayers. Issue all authorized debt 
and to pay bills and payrolls of the town in an efficient and timely <coughs> manner, all according to Mass General Law. Okay. Thanks, Pam. Um, why don't I, I'll just run through the numbers quick before we open it up. Um, another budget that, that has actually gone down a little bit. Last year's appropriation was $295,000, and this year's appropriation is $294,000. Um, so it's uh, relatively flat, and um, I don't, there's no changes in personnel. Um, same people, uh, same position. Um, the one thing <coughs> is in here are a couple of large ticket items that are in here are the postage, all the mailing of the, uh, the bills and what have you, and, um, and then the rest of it is, is pretty much personnel. Open up the board. Any questions? John? No. Okay, you guys do a great job. You know, it's a lot of work and a, a few people doing it, so um, a lot happens in that office over there, so. Certainly does. Good. Still getting used to it. <laughs> I was going to ask you, uh, Justin. I am. I'm getting there. Good. Yeah, I, I like it very, very much. Good. So I got a great staff. That's great. Great. Let's well, keep good up the hear. good work. Um, we're not going to vote us tonight, that. and um, if we have any further questions, we'll get back to you. Okay. Um, I think you're doing the next ones, right? Yes, I have seven, I believe. Great. So we will move on to the next one, which is uh, the group insurance. Um, number 914. Okay. And if you have the mission for there, you can read that. Okay. This appropriation funds the town's share of health and life insurance premiums for all eligible town employees and retirees. The town is a member of the Mayflower Municipal Health Group which is comprised of several Plymouth County municipalities, school districts, and Plymouth County employees. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 32B, any active permanent town employee working a minimum of 20 hours per week is eligible for group insurance as a benefit of employment. Great. Um, so just the numbers, quickly last year we appropriated 5.5 million and this year it is down to 5.2 million. And that has to do with some of the changes that were made um, in terms of the plans. Um, the rate saver and the benchmark plans. Right. Um, and it saves the money, I mean the town a considerable amount of money. Um, the savings you say here expect to, uh, are projected to be somewhere between six and eight percent. Right, um, we have a meeting Thursday morning with the county, so we'll know the exact number. Oh, good. Great. Any questions from the board? Thanks. Great. Move on to the next one. That's a simple one, a one liner, as is the next one 9 um, 11, which is the Plymouth County Retirement. 9 10. 9 10. 9 10. First. Sure, we'll do that one first. Okay. 9 10, <coughs> which is also the pension, but this is for the non-contributory people. Okay. The budget represents the funding of retired benefits for those employees whose service began prior to establishment of the current Plymouth County Retirement Contribution System. The Commonwealth reimburses the town for past cost of living adjustments <coughs> granted through the year 1999. Currently, there are three remaining individuals receiving the pension benefit. We only have three left. No changes from last year. Fiscal 15, there will be changes, but we're not sure what that is yet. We should know soon. Um, so, uh, as Pam mentioned, uh, last year's appropriation was almost $63,000, and this year's is the same at $63,000. These are just for people that were employed before the current retirement system was in place, so they are still being paid on the old system. And there's three people left. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Great. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to the next one, which is all the other people. So 9-11 Plymouth County Retirement bills the town annually for its share of fiscal year appropriation. Situates fiscal year 14 is 6.65% of the total Plymouth County retirement assessment. 
This fund pays for retirement benefits of current town retirees and contributes to unfunded liability of the retirement system. The town takes advantage of a savings benefit by paying an annual July assessment rather than the highest, higher cost of a semi-annual payment that includes interest. For fiscal 14, the savings to the town is $71,037. Great. So this is, uh, this is, I think, our largest single line item expense. Um, it is, uh, last year the appropriation was $3.4 million, and this year it's almost $3.6 million. Um, and this is, is this still an estimate? Yes. This is an actual number? It's an estimate. It's an estimate. Yeah. Okay. Just one quick question. Just at least my sheet says I see that sheet again. Mm -hmm. Trisha, this is something fairly new you started to do by paying it mm -hmm. once a year, isn't it? Why do no, I Jane, remember that? Jane, Jane instituted did it? that, yep. All right. And so what we're saving by paying once a year is the 71000 that Pam mentioned. Right. Yeah. All right, good, great. And then there's another line. I, this is the transfer to the um, open liabilities, the other employee benefit liabilities which we're putting a budget of $71,000 into that this year? 2% uh, of the retirement assessment. So that's, um, yep, there it so, is. So um, two years ago we started this, and this is, there's some outrageous number of potential liability that the town has. $53 50 million. million or something? 53 or 50. That was on the last actuarial study. Um, so, we started two years ago, we put about $15,000 in. Last year we put almost $70,000 in, $68,000 in, and this year we're putting another $71,000 in. Does, um, gas, uh, do we have to put that in? I know it's, it's, it's uh, suggested that we do, but no, is it a law now? No, it's in the financial policies. Right. I know it's our um, policy, but, but we don't have to. it's not mandated. Right. Um, so, any questions on this line item? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to the next one, which you're here. I just mentioned on that one, this is the one we anticipate um, to go up significantly in FY15, mm -hmm. and there's a $75,000 appropriation to stabilization to, to at right. least try to smooth that a little bit. <coughs> Good point. So um, the uh, Plymouth County Retirement is doing a whole new assessment of their um, actuaries and their, are they adjusting the age, death age or something? Are they, Mortality, mortality rate. rates are factored into right. the retirement assessment. So they're looking at that, which is going to cause these numbers to jump up and our expenditures to increase. We don't know to what amount. We know it's going to be a big number. We don't know if it's going to be spread out over more than one year. So as Trisha just mentioned, we allocated $75,000 from the stabilization fund to start to um, defer this cost so it doesn't hit us all in one year. Great. Um, we'll move on to the next one, 916, which is federal taxes. Okay. The mission statement is this appropriation funds the town's federal employer contributions that matches the employee's <coughs> 1.5 Medicare contribution. Great. This is not optional. Um, last year we appropriated $528,000, and this year it is $574,000. It's a straight calculation from the payroll. Um, so if you've got the employees right and they're paid, then this is generally pretty close. Um, any questions on it? Oh. Great. Tricia, any other comments on that or no? No. Um, my, this number's my number. Pam had a little bit of a different number. So if it's wrong, it's all my fault that I want to be <laughs> publicly on the record for. So is her number higher or lower? Mine was significantly was, higher. Yeah. But FY13, um, she based it on FY13, and we had a lot of two years retro for fire, oh, two right. years in the Quindle, <coughs> so um, so I, I, I did a little machination there. But we'll look at it again, obviously, before we finalize the warrant. Great. So retroactive pay would not come into play in this stuff. I think, yeah. yeah. So we, I made a consideration for that because there was quite a bit of it in FY12. 
Great. Um, the next line item is debt and interest, <coughs> number 720. The treasurer collector is responsible for co coordinating all town borrowing for both tax supported and five self supporting enterprise funds, golf, sewer, transfer station, water, and waterways. This includes the various short term and long term debt plan options for existing and proposed borrowings, bond anticipating notes, bans, general obligation bonds, mass water pollution, pollu pollution abatement trusts, interim, short term in long-term bonds, the interfund advanced borrowing. The co treasurer collector works closely with the town's fin financial administrator and bond council to implement borrowings for departments in compliance with Mass General Law upon the assistance of the town clerk, board of selectmen, town administrator, and the town accountant to fulfill requirements of that role properly. That is a long one. Basically, you borrow all the money that we need to do all of our projects. Right. For enterprise funds, for the town, for debt exclusions, for overrides, all that sort of stuff. Um, the number last year was 2047 The year before that was 2054 And this year, um, we have it jumping up to 2362 Now, in the past, I don't know if this is just the debt that affects the operating budget. All debt exclusion is out of this number? Yes. No, it's all. No, we have to budget the entire thing. Right. So this number, when we look at our forecast, right, you'd have the revenue. Yeah, it's like You know, it'd be great if we could something. get that number, how much of it is just, you know, usually we look at it in a couple different buckets. What's affecting the enterprise funds, which is in each one of the enterprise funds budgets, how much is going to affect the... Um, general operating budget and how much is going to be debt exclusion which we actually get the money in on the tax roll. <coughs> so if we can get those numbers that'd be great. Well the enterprise funds are here. Yeah they're not in this number. They're in the individual enterprise right, budget. Right, right. But I mean there's a is there a sheet? Yeah, yeah it's, it's on that one there. Yeah. The debt excluded explanation. Yeah, the, the debt excluded is in there. But I understand right. what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's we have the numbers, they're just not right. all in one place. They're dispersed. Right. And what happens when we do the forecast is if we pull this You're number just in, looking then it's out. Not. Yeah. Can I have a question? So our um, bond rating just increased, right? Got better? Yes. Does that affect any of these numbers, or is that just going to be more for future? Sure, sure. Um, yes. Do you want? I mean, this. The reason the budget's up three hundred thousand is it reflects the six point six million we issued in November. Correct. So theoretically, if our bond rating had remained the same, then that would translate to a higher interest rate, which means this number would have been mm -hmm. higher to okay. some degree. Right. Exactly. Yeah. right. Okay. You're so that that full numbers, it doesn't impact them because all the old already, debt, it doesn't already, impact that. Yeah. No, no it, it doesn't, doesn't affect the old ones. On uh, yeah. I was basically yeah. asking, is there any debt okay. in okay. here yeah. that's yeah. subject to the new higher bond rating? Well, going the forward, yes. okay. yep. uh, the, you know, we can recall bonds. Yeah, right, and then redo. Yeah. And we, and because our rating is better, we're looking into that now to maybe be saving some more money. Uh, you're supposed to wait 10, 10 uh, years to call, call a bond. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm talking to the financial advisors now because there's one that we can uh, call up and save some money. So we're looking into doing that now. No, it's great. The point I wanted to make is... Um, in fact, you all are saving us money already with that higher, higher bond rate, which is <coughs> bond rating, which is great. We have to borrow. We, yeah, it's great. We look really good to borrow. It's great so, stuff. So, Pam, if we, I don't want to use the golf course for an example, but if we had a, um, a loan on, on something like the golf course and we've just got a bump up in our rating, we could rewrite our loan and get a better rate? Well, you still have to have a certain amount of... Um, Debt, debt owed on it. And All right, maybe that wasn't a good call example. The golf but course at one point. I think we did refinance the debt on the golf course. I just used that as yeah, came, no, it came to mind first. But yeah. the, I'm pretty sure we did, but the golf <laughs> course the is done in two more years. But because of our years. bump up, we can rewrite some of our and get better rates. Good. Depending yeah. on the term. Depending on the term and to, okay. you know, the market, it has to be, right. you know, the financial advisors, you know, um, want at least, uh, you know, a, close to between a four and a six percent savings mm -hmm. for it even to be worthwhile because you know it takes a month to get everything going and everything through and the instru it, right now the interest rates are going up so mm -hmm. we just never know 
um, you know, it has to be a substantial savings, savings. going yep. forward. And there is one, like I said, that I'll probably be speaking with you guys in a couple more weeks about. Great. But in terms of the school projects, the library projects, and the facilities master plan, um, it certainly helps. Obviously, when we go to issue any debt, the rating gets looked at all over again. So now our challenge isn't to go up, it's to maintain, it which is going to be an equal challenge. But yeah. as long yeah, as yeah, we yeah. keep doing what we're doing, we should be fine. Because yeah. we have to go through that whole process again, you know, getting rated. And the only thing I'd mention is that the, the interest has gone up considerably. You know, it's gone up $300,000 as a shared expense. <laughs> so it does impact, impact the, um, the operating budgets. Um, and this is, as Tricia said, we've just passed or just bonded six million dollars worth of assets which I think well, how much was the ESCO three five point nine but five. we only bonded two point two point something yeah seven of it I think right. so three of that is the ESCO which is going to be yeah. hopefully reducing the operating budgets as well but this year's capital plan is going to have to be you know very looked at very closely because we already have a, a chunk hit in this. Right, area. and it does reflect that and anticipation of the other big capital projects we have. The capital plan is probably more conservative than you've seen in a few years. Right. Great. Uh, move on to uh, 158, the tax foreclosure. The intent of this appropriation is to seek compensation for the town by pursuing the collection of outstanding taxes within the confines of Mass General Law statutes for tax taking and foreclosures. This is the tough part of the business. So these are people that have not paid their taxes and we have to go through legal action to try and collect that money. Right. And uh, I take this Personally, you know, I like to uh, work with the taxpayers as much as I can. So in my uh, major components uh, this year, when we went to file uh, tax title for fiscal 12, there was 165 individuals that were up for tax title. And we advertised, I sent letters, and I called. I actually called everybody that was like below $5,000 and tried to have them come in and uh, talk to me before I went through the process. And at the end, we ended up only filing 44. Wow. So that was huge. And uh, I hope to clear up a lot more. That's great. I mean, that's. Does that mean the one, the difference between 165 and 44 solved their problem? Right. Okay. I think the phone calls make a big difference. It's outstanding. Yeah, I got a lot. I, you know, it, it's we, outstanding. I did five, you know, took five each. It wasn't a big deal, and if anybody had a problem, we just took care of it then. I was really proud of it. and I think and that's great. I mean, that's what that's that's the what customer service for. aspect of town the, government that we're trying to right. work on. As the Rick the other on. thing I want to add, I'll add it now since it seems appropriate, is um, taxes were due last Friday, and town, close, clo town mm -hmm. hall closes at quarter 12. And um, we had a conversation and decided to pay staff to stay till close of business on Friday. And 90 people came through the treasurer's office between 12 and 5. And um, that's a lot of work and a lot of staff. And um, I think PM and the assessor's office, who also stayed, uh, to be commended for um, suggesting it and agreeing to it and staying to do it. Well, again, that's what we're here for, it's the residents. So that's, that's next great. time we'll do it, too. It was definitely worthwhile. Um, I do feel bad, you know, next time we'll advertise it more. We put it on the website and in the paper, but you know, um, I think the residents were thrilled we were here. So. Uh, those are the little that's the little things that are the good decisions that are for the best Absolutely. of the citizens, yeah, and right. that's what we're moving towards. That's what Trisha's initiatives have. And yeah, I'm going to tell you, I was one of the 90, and I have to tell you, <laughs> 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 I knocked you out. You got out of, I got out of court, and I was heading back, and I literally was hitting every traffic light, and I actually called Sheila. She said, no, they're open. And I said, great. And I, because I was thinking there might be a drop box. I mean, we're discussing it. When I got here, I happened to see it, saw some people coming in. I just want to say, Pam, thank you. It was very, both you and the assessor's office were staying open. I think it's a great service for the town people because it is a tax day. They're supposed to pay. Normally, the town offices are open until 
4.30, you know, except for Tuesdays when they're open later. And it happened to fall on a Friday when our offices close early. And I, I just say that was a very smart idea. So well, taxpayers like good. me were very happy. And I well, thank you for it. And I think in a lot of other towns are going to follow us because I got calls. <coughs> you guys stayed open late. And I said, yes, we did. You're making it look bad. That's, That's good. Right. <laughs> That's cool. And just the numbers of it, it's, we appropriate almost $40,000 to this budget, and it's the same as last year. Great job. Good decision. Yeah. And I know there's at least 90 people that really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. <clears throat> the next uh, group that we're going to look at is the Department of Public Works. All, uh, I guess there's five, the Totality, Engineering, Administration, Highway, and Public Grounds. And Al. I brought my bodyguards with me. And okay, all the, it's all here. And the presentation. This is number 400. Thank you, Chair. This is my dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you need this one? Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. We are, uh, let me, I'm going to do an overview, uh, discussion of goals for more or less the plans for the coming year. And then, if you will, I can guide you through the departments uh, in a way that, every, that individuals can discuss their department. And we'll, we'll go more or less in the order that's in your book to keep it before you. Before you go, can, can you get this on TV? Can you get that on? Just, just to make sure so they can, people in the audience and TV can watch it out, that's all. Good, great, thanks. So the DPW, um, and this, these would be our proposed budgets for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, the mission of the DPW is to provide services to situate residents and property owners. Uh, the services we provide are across uh, the, the range I've listed here. Uh, we maintain and improve the roads, the parks, the cemeteries, and the playgrounds. Uh, we deliver fresh water for human consumption and for fire protection. Uh, we dispose of municipal solid waste in a responsible manner while encouraging recycling in the town of Situate. We manage the collection and treatment of sewage from our approximately one-third of Situate residents who are connected to the system. And we manage all infrastructure, flat construction in town. And we have to do this uh, in the most efficient man manner when we provide our services, and we have to do it in accordance with federal, state, local statutes, uh, regulations, and bylaws. What I want to talk about briefly are some of the work plans for the coming year, what, what we see before us. In the area of public streets, we have a big paving plan that will start immediately in the spring and continue through the summer and the fall. Um, we are going to be doing intersection improvements, and the focus in our intersections will be we're going to focus on the corridor from the harbor to 3A. Um, we will be at the Beaver Dam Jericho lights uh, section looking at uh, improving the lights, the crosswalks, and the shape of that intersection to make it safer for pedestrians as well as motorists on that very busy intersection. Yes, sir. Since you're on that intersection now, why is the, the stop line at Tilden? You're talking Tilden Beaver Dam, right? I'm talking Jericho, Jericho Beaver, uh, okay. Beaver Dam. By the hotel. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can adjust that stop line. That, that's, right. that is, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Stop line right. Sorry way back too far, right. Um, the, the next one we want to work on is if you go up past the railroad tracks to where there's a five-way Beaver Dam at Lawson and Branch coming in together. It's one of the more dangerous intersections in towns, low incidents, uh, low impact uh, accidents, but frequent ones, difficult for, inter for folks to get through. We're examining installing there a small roundabout, uh, which would then uh, enable traffic to keep moving and make it very clear who has what right away when. Additionally, as you go up to the first parish at Country Way, we're also looking at a small roundabout there, and you've seen that, seen that on the wall outside. We will work this, of course, with everybody abutting those areas so that everybody understands, uh, and we can work out solutions for everyone in those areas. Ultimately, we want to come back to first parish at Cudworth, right outside of Gates School, and we're looking at uh, changes in the flow of traffic in that area. And we won't get to that this year, but we'll be, we'll be putting some ideas on the table, working with traffic rules and with the planning board to come up with ways of changing the traffic pattern, improving parking for the small Cudworth um, play, uh, playground there, improving the safety for the children in that playground area, and we think improving traffic patterns overall. Lastly, in the area of uh, our public streets, uh, we're making signage improvements that are in part mandated by a, an unfunded mandate from the federal government that that signage over time become much more reflective, brighter, more reflective, in recognition of the aging population. 
Uh, in the course of doing this, since the signage is going to be more expensive, we're going to be eliminating obsolete signs. Obsolete and, and uh, you know, you don't, know my, don't know how many signs I've seen around town that are uh, caution blind <laughs> child and the sign is probably 60 years old. So the child might be nearly that old as well. So signs that are not, uh, up, uh, not really authorized by the federal standards for signage we're going to be removing and the ones we put back will be uh, much more visible. In the area of water, the focus will continue on replacing and abandoning the pre-1935 cast iron pipes. We still have 24 miles to go in that area. For the area of pipes put in after 1935, we're looking at several innovative new technologies for cleaning those pipes. I say innovative new, it's innovative and new for the town of Situate. These are pretty much proven technologies used in other parts of the country. We will be, uh, we've already experimented with two of them and we're looking at a third one that we'll be trying uh, this year as well on a test cell. And also we're going to re we continue our plan to reduce the reliance on uh, surface water. Uh, surface water requires more treatment, uh, well water uh, tastes better. So those are the directions we're going in with our water department uh, in the area of sewer. We will complete the expansion of the sewer to 310 new families out in the Mindet and Musquashigat area this spring and we'll be giving them letters so they can begin uh, connecting to the new sewer. Um, following that, uh, we're already discussing with a couple of engineering firms uh, a plan to reassess the next phase of expansions. Uh, the phases were developed in 1998 on the basis of uh, where septic systems were failing and what conditions of soil. We want to reassess that and not just follow that 1998 plan but come up with the next logical step for expanding our sewer system. And we feel bullish we can do that because the work we've been doing on I&I &I has grown capacity. We'll continue to do that work. Um, and then we're, we are on the other side of it facing a very challenging uh, issue with the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, the requirements for copper levels in the outflow from the sewer plant are approximately one one hundredth of the requirements for copper levels in our drinking water. Of course, the sewer plant receives only drinking water from people, so this is difficult. We don't have a, we don't have a copper removal technique, so we um, have a temporary, um, what's it called? Yeah, we have an interim level, an order of conditions for an interim level that well, within five <laughs> years we have to come up with a solution to how to reduce the copper in citrate water and in the effluent from the sewer plant. So the transfer just, station. Just to hold off there for hours. Yeah. So where's the copper coming from? From the wells? Our wells. Uh, is it coming from the from pipes? Pipes. Copper pipes and homes. So, so it's not the water going into water. the homes. It's well, it could be coming from the homes. It's not the water so much in the ground. It's when the water goes through uh, all of our homes and goes back and yeah. returns down there on the driftway. It has picked up copper. Yeah. <laughs> So the, and the problem is where, where we discharge, the uh, it discharges into a stream where there's not much dilution and so there's concerns that the species that are in there might uh, be getting nuked with uh, copper. Not nuked, but I mean getting overloaded with copper. Okay. Transfer station, continue to produce, uh, the, um, we want to continue to produce a positive cash flow which enables us to reinvest in that place. Um, re we've re been reinvesting in the equipment. Shortly we're going to need to be doing some reinvestment in buildings, just simply from the standpoint of repainting some things. Um, it looks pretty good, it's, but it's running on 12 years old now. Salty environment, that, that uh, painted metal is uh, at some point going to look pretty tatty, so we want to get on top of that. Um, also at the, in line with this is offsetting the cost increases. Once again, after five years, we've been able to hold uh, fees flat and generate the money to, to keep the place running. It's, uh, we want to resolve an issue that we have with the uh, landfill gas flare. It keeps going out, not enough gas. Uh, some issues with that. We're looking at alternatives for how to uh, manage that in the future. And um, we're looking for ways to further increase Situate's excellent recycling record and maintain our leadership position um, for the, in the southeast. Um, in the area of energy improvements, um, get that solar array built and online. Had conversations again with the developers today and they're very close to coming back and we'll see some construction starting here shortly. Don't hold me to that, but you know, they're bullish. 
I'm waiting to see it. Well, did we, I saw line crews working at the entrance. Was it something to do with that? Absolutely. They've, uh, they've paid big bucks for National Grid to go out and put in uh, poles and some significant switching equipment. So they've, they've just recently made another $175,000 investment at the <laughs> landfill to get ready for the construction. So saw that. that's another right. positive sign. Um, the way I think we should handle our discussions about the budgets themselves is to go at them in this order. Um, since, since I'm talking now, we can take the administrative budget, a fairly small budget, and it's in your book under tab 400, and you have to count back 13 pages. Back or forward? And then we'll go through them in that order. Back. Is that uh, 410 facilities? It's, uh, no, that's not, Is keep going. One, one in totality? You're looking for 421. This budget is uh, uh, down uh, from last year's appropriation significantly, uh, in large part because... Al, can you hold on a sec? We're, yeah. um, at least this one is flailing. Be, I'm flailing. Uh, kind of in the middle. 421. 421. You've, I think you've got gotcha. Did you have them? He's yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll just put up front the, the, the step change decrease from the current year's appropriation is 206,000 in total and it's down to 140,000. Uh, that's because we've shifted the facilities manager who was in this budget for this year is in a new facilities budget, which you'll discuss with him next week. So that facilities discussion will be better handled next and week. And that's the, that's the sole reason for the decrease from the 200 to 132. Yes. Yeah, the we, same as we did bill, we created it, and then the second year, the, once the position was established, we swept. So facilities director was in DPW this year. For IT. Right. It's coming to its own department next year. So. Um, so the total Budget is 206,000 last year, and this year is 138, and that is pretty much the whole reason for the decrease. Right. And this budget is basically you and administrative expenses to run the office. Half, half of the secretary and, yeah, copier and postage. Great. Okay. The next one, 411. So now if you go to 411, you go back three pages from where you are. Do you count the yellow as a page? Huh? Do you count the yellow as a page? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> and we'll turn to Kevin. Um, Al's already read our mission statement. If you'd like, I could reread it again or any of our goals. Just a quick summary of what the engineering department does. They manage the projects and... Um, any town projects from the design phase all the way through till the end, uh, managing them and making sure they're completed. So, I mean, we know you're involved in seawalls, you're involved in roads, you're involved in... We're involved in seawalls, roads, uh, <laughs> traffic, you, name you know, it. looking at any, any other projects that, that we get involved in, and we also try to make sure everything complies to Mass General Law for uh, bidding purposes and stuff like that. Right. So last year's budget was 705. This year... The recommended is 690. Um, the major decrease there is the office equipment. Last year it was $18,000 of capital items that is not in this year. Otherwise, um, it's pretty flat budget. Is that correct? Pretty much, yes. I see you asked for the 18000 and it did not get recommended. No new peeps, no new personnel, same personnel. Seems pretty straightforward. Any any questions for Kevin's department? What was it you wanted, Faye? Was it the CAD system? 
Um, we were going to use it, some of those funds, to help update our, um, our town benchmark system and some of the other survey needs in town. We, we have an old benchmark system that's actually, Paul Scott said it was old when he started, and we're looking to uh, do some updates to it um, and try to reestablish it and bring it up to town standards and also tie it in so it could be tied into GIS. What is it benchmarking? Um, the elevation. So if you were building a house and you want to figure out how high or how low you had to build a foundation, it's the town benchmark that you would go back to and shoot your grade over and then carry it over to that house. And how many are there? How many benchmarks are there? Um, is it that guy on the street that holds that thing? 352 benchmarks. Uh, something, there's a whole bunch of them. It's Yeah, they hold the rod and they shoot through the instrument and they, they carry that elevation. They carry it over from house to house. So what we're looking to do is a primary survey and kind of lock the town in a little better. And it, it's going to take a while because it wouldn't be something we could just bang out all at once. And, and we're looking at that. So this isn't actually a piece of equipment. This is a... It, originally it was kind of a piece of equipment. Then we were, we were trying to figure out how we could how we could use it in different areas. So. Or upgrading a system. Then. Yeah. And how we could bring it into like a GIS system or something. We're still struggling bringing all that together. And you're going to fix some of the benchmarks that are missing, right? We have a lot that are missing from yeah. over the years. So it's a circular brass thing, usually built in a nice little concrete footer that gives the actual elevation. U.S. Geological Survey, U.S. Geodetic Survey in the old days. Right, but and we're not buying an $18,000 thing. <laughs> no, no, but that's the work involved help in them. raising our... Right. This will help them identify those and track them better. Don't don't the surveyors, Kevin, normally when they go out to do surveying for various lots, find those benchmarks or well, they do. They have to, to go. They have to go back and tie them? into the benchmarks. Um, they would they would fall back and tie into one of the town benchmarks. But what we've been finding is the town benchmarks is a certain amount of error that was done. If it was done in the 30s, say, and we we have to work on that and clean that up a little bit. Additionally, some of the benchmarks are things such as nails in telephone pole. Um, top lug nut of a hydrant. Top lug nut. You know, yeah. that has come off and been put back on. Or, or you streets. Know, I know sometimes with streets, so, you know, the nails can pop out or, or stone walls or drill points or something. I was only asking because is there any way of trying to tie them into the surveyors who do it? But I assume you don't want to rely on surveyors to do the work. You, they'd, you'd rather have the town come up with benchmarks so that the surveyors rely on them because you know that definitely they are done properly without originally when we when we things. were looking at the budget I was talking to Al briefly about it and there's there's some instrumentation you can buy where it's a it's a GPS unit that ties into satellites but I don't think that would we had met with a survey company afterwards and that won't work to the degree of accuracy that we're going to need at this time yeah, it gets correct. better and better but um so we were going back and forth on how we'd do it. And we've actually met with a couple survey firms just to discuss the scope of it and get everything together. So it might, it might be a three-phase project. We might be working on it for three, four years, but we're, it's our goal to get it together. Gotcha. Great. Okay. Move on to the next. I just, Tony, we yeah. want to note that under the engineering budget, there is yet for the third year in a row 400000 for roads and seawalls. You know, that's a good point. I meant to bring that up. So um, the override... <laughs> Hmm. Two years ago, three. Mm -hmm. This is It'll three. Be the third budget. This is the third year um, that, on the town's portion of the override, we allocated four hundred thousand dollars to the maintenance of seawalls and roads, and uh, again, that was in the operating budget for each one of those four years, three years, mm -hmm. and it's again in this year. And I just want to note that's a real commitment, and uh, that I think the board um, has made. <coughs> at the expense of others because the override does a road each year and yet we've still maintained that and that might not always be the case but that we do that Just on that same note um, that also um, relates to si uh, sidewalks correct that's the finding <coughs> yes, for it it's, yeah I know that we had recently received some um, a request from traffic rules regulations about adding a sidewalk from Stockbridge on vinyl to Jenkins I don't know if that's a consideration or something in the future but obviously, in conjunction with the roads, I think it's important that we <coughs> go based on the report, Al, that you sat on six, seven years ago right. about sidewalks and trying to create linkage on the critical components or right. critical areas. We've got, we're going to cover that one. Wasn't that done? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of you. Oh. Jump the gun. Go ahead. Highway? Highway. Go back to the next yellow tab and you find 422. Pass the... <laughs> Uh, 
Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. No game tonight? No, no game. <laughs> Practice earlier. So this um, is the Highway Department, 422? Yep. And the Highway Department manages uh, all the major road projects, um, sidewalk projects, um, catch basin cleaning, catch basin repair, um, just about anything you can think of with the roads, the signs, um, and that's about it for our highway. In totality, the budget last year was um, a million fifty-one. This year, it's a million sixty. So it is um, relatively flat, um, and that's really just step increases and just cost of living increases and in pay is what. Uh, impacted that ten thousand dollars. <coughs> so is this where you wanted to talk about sidewalks? Well, I was going to ask about it, but I, th I think you were. What were you going to? Were you going to suggest anything, Mike or, or Al, about sidewalks as kind of a idea of this coming year, or or do you have any thoughts about Sorry. sidewalks? Uh, in other words, walkways with and <coughs> or, yeah. Do you you know? Yeah, would well, you? Uh, we we have uh, this, there's two sidewalk projects on the property um before cpc this year i'm sorry bike paths trail projects. Right. Um, the uh, there's, a, there's a trail on uh, that goes from on country way uh they the cpc has a has a, is going to propose to town meeting that that they fund the trail from uh basically ronnie shown store down to huey which is halfway to two-thirds of the way to country way and then next year they uh, fully intended to run it all the way to Greenbush. That was one of the selected sidewalks. It was a DPW who put that project into CPC. And then there's another CPC project called the Harbor Walk, which <coughs> they seem to be a favorable review of, but they haven't yet voted on. And of course, they have, all these have to go to town meeting, but that would go from, that would be making significant repairs to the sidewalk on Jericho Road from Beaver Dam Lights down towards Foam. And they may fund a portion of that or, or all of it. I'm not sure which. Wow. In uh, both of those cases, the DPW is, is uh, donating, if you will, the engineering costs. So we will do the uh, engineering. One requires very little engineering. The other requires quite a bit of engineering. And then uh, we're going to take a look at vinyl, uh, the, the section on vinyl. And there's a section on the, the driftway that uh, our new Kent, I forget which it is, that really needs to be a gap that needs to be filled. It's, it's not a very difficult road, and it's just not right now that gap there. So those are two small ones we'll probably fund within our own. And, and we're going to complete the uh, Captain P.S. sidewalk. That was uh, the just a base coat on that Captain P.S. sidewalk now. And the uh, some of the road projects we got going for the um, spring that to finish off, we're going to finish off Common Street. They just got too late in the season to... Uh, to complete that common street common lane um, captain pierce road is also scheduled to be paved summer street cedar street hazel Ave, uh, hazel Ave from beaver dam to brook um on all of it and then um they we're going to try to get the town hall access road done around back here and on the side um and that was the projects that we're we're right now if we have more money we're going to available we're gonna um we've already discussed a few other roads we're gonna try to take care of so the funding of this comes from chapter 90. chapter 90 um the override funding that you've provided the town has provided as well as uh capital funding that was provided in the past year and is in this year's capital budget. so the town is now um, I, I would like to say we're actually matching our ta Chapter 90 funds. For many years, all the work the town had was money given to the town by the state. Uh, prior to that, the town funded all of its roads, and the state took over, and the town stopped doing anything. So now we're going forward with both uh, our residents' uh, uh, property tax money, uh, my money, your money, as well as right. the money that comes back to us from the state. Right. So we get about, if I remember correctly, about $500,000 from the state. About 400 from our own. 200 from the override. Yeah. And where's the other money coming from? Capital. Oh, but that has to go through the capital process. Correct. Correct. Right. That includes CPC, right? And no, that doesn't include not, CPC. Not CPC. Yeah. So, Al, why don't you tell the board what it costs to pave a mile of road? Hmm. It's it costs per mile. mile. Yeah. It's 400,000 to pave yeah. a mile. <coughs> Just right. one mile. <coughs> 
And how long does a road last? Uh, well, if you catch the road at about 12 years, uh, it's very cheap to repair. If you wait till 20, you're going to spend another 400000 So No, but how long does a paved road last? Paved road, right? Yeah, it could last, uh, you know, 20 years. Right. So we'll never get caught up. Just because there's more than 20 <laughs> miles of road in situ. So, um, so we do have to find funding from right. other sources to. But you do a great job. I mean, I haven't. I've noticed this year there's not a lot of potholes, and um, we haven't really been getting. A, I haven't got a lot of complaints. So. One thing that was that Mike was able to do <coughs> to do uh, was called seal coating. Oh, that's right. Crack, crack patching. Crack patching. Which you can do the crack patching after three or four years because roads will begin to develop some cracks. If you do the crack patching, then the road doesn't need such a major rebuild four or five years after that. So it's, it's a little uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Rick. Yeah, just a uh, quick editorial comment before something else. It's always interesting to me when people say we have our own town taxes and then the state gives us money. Let's, let's not forget that the state's money is also yeah. tax money that's ours too. <laughs> um, uh, a couple questions, Al, uh, about the town hall access road. We're not going to be doing anything on that until we find out about the new school and so on. If we're putting a new school right here, I don't want to be spending money on a road that we're just going to tear up. Yeah. I understand there's some big holes and things that we need to do, but... Yeah, this, this road back here is, um, it is heavily, heavily used uh, yeah. as school, by, by the schools, the school buses, all the school children, the mothers, uh, as well as uh, mothers and fathers, rather, commuters, and uh, and then, then the emergency vehicles. I mean, yeah. the, you'll see uh, fire trucks tearing out of here, or police cars tearing out Right, but I just wanted to reassure people that we're not doing a wholesale, no. you know, re-engineering, no. redesign of anything. No, just to research. No, just to get it going. Light overlay probably gotcha. on top of it. Yeah. And then the, the other question, we had had some conversations about the uh, Common Street and that intersection, and that's being still on the back burner or looked at? Nope. Uh, uh, improving that for that intersection, it will most likely go to tackle that when we uh, do the paving, but uh, there, are, there are a number of um, some subtleties there. abutting neighbor issues to resolve there because yeah. of access to driveways and everything. So it, just, yeah. it wasn't just turned in, turned out to be a quick fix. Right, but it's still on the radar screen? Still on the radar screen? Yes, absolutely. Great. Yep. That's great. And again, just for the people listening, all of this will go through a process. So you're not going to wake up one morning and see, you know, a rotary at Ronnie Shones. This will go through traffic and rules, and there'll be opportunities right. for, for public input. And, you know, before a sign gets taken down, you'll have an opportunity to, to voice your opinion. And then my last point about signs is I really applaud you guys for going after old signs that are no longer relevant. Um, on my request and other people's request, you're putting up some new signs that really, really help, and those are great. And but just anywhere you can take down those old signs would be just fantastic because they're pollution and they're distracting and they're safety hazards that get in the way, and I just applaud that 100%. Because it's going to get rid of signs that are useless, and also it's going to make people pay attention more to the signs that actually count. We, we have an overt goal in that area, and that is to eliminate 250 obsolete signs. So I'm thinking maybe we'll put a bounty on signs and Pay bonuses. Oh, I, believe it. I believe it. I got 15 now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe it. You drive around and you find like speed limit signs that are 30 feet apart from each other. And clearly one was put up in 20 years more recently than the other one. But they're right next to each other. It's like, what's the point of that? All right. <clears throat> 429. The next is public grounds, and they do uh, maintain all the playgrounds, the uh, parks. Um, they do with trash. They take care of the two cemeteries. Um, they have an awful lot of work, uh, especially in the summertime when the when there's a lot of cutting and line striping of all the fields. Great, and that just uh, numerically, it was uh, whoa. Okay, so this was $951,000 last year, and this year is only 657000 but that is because the, um, also in the override money, there was $100,000 allocated to buildings and um, other capital, <laughs> not capital, but. Basically, this is another one affected by the setup of the facilities department. So this went to that budget. Yes, so the, uh, that versus that, uh, building repair money that was put in through the override has been transferred to facilities and a number of other areas uh, the janitorial staff was transferred to facilities uh, the supplies and equipment the, the 
they're um, involved with uh, was transferred. And so what we try to do is to identify where, where was money being spent uh, in the grounds department to maintain town hall, police, and fire stations that ought to go into the facilities budget. So that money for the facilities, the facilities budget is a direct deduct from here. Right. So we'll have to look at these in, <coughs> in uh, unison as we look at those. The, the two items, though, for equipment and furnished replacement, so two years ago there was twenty-eight thousand dollars for that, and now there's nothing this year. Is that did that go to the facilities, or is that just being cut? That's being cut. That was originally under the override to buy chairs and furnishings for uh, desks and uh, council on aging and here, the changes that you see. So that's right. that's gone. So there was a request for another fifty-four thousand dollars, which is not being forwarded, and that did not get sent over to facilities. Great. Um, any questions? Grounds do a great job. You know, they get probably uh, um, told the most when we do these, you know, at Memorial Day or all the events where the grounds just look great for those. But just on a day-to-day -day basis, the fields, like you mentioned, the beach, um, you know, I, I will keep lobbying for more trash cans at the beach because no matter how many you put up there, they're full by Sunday at, at <coughs> noon. Um, but overall, you do a great job getting the whole town looking very great, and I know the beautification committee helps in its spots, but uh, but that stuff does a great job in, in keeping the town looking pretty. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, move on to the next one. Snow and ice, next yellow cab. I like this one out because under risks and challenges, you write weather and salt. That's pretty much your, your risks and challenges are snow and ice. So last year we budgeted 490. I think the state law allows you to budget whatever you budgeted in the prior year. So we budgeted 490 again this year. And we just see what the weather does. Yeah, you never know. Fire over time. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, well, don't we've, go there. Over the last 10 years, we've tried to guess, and there's no guessing. This year we've spent, uh, I, was, I would say, I'm quickly adding, I think it's probably about 40000 so we've spent already. You say, what with this little weather that we've had? And the problem is with the weather that you have, it's, it's, uh, it's almost, sometimes it's easier to just fight a big, flat-out snowstorm because you wait until the snow stops and you plow it. Like Friday. And then you go home. <laughs> yeah. These things, it's a constant uh, going out and... Putting sand and salt, and salt yeah. out and trying to use it. Now, where does the purchase of the salt? Is that in this budget? Yes. 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 Salt is so in the So is that the uh, roadway maintenance? Right. And, uh, it, it's all natural salt. Comes well, plus we have the truck that does the brine. The brine truck. Right. Yep. yep. Is that working well? Yep. yep. That's been out a couple of times this year. It has to be the right conditions for that uh, truck to to work so if you get the perfect conditions during the day you can salt the main drags and try to uh, see so when you do go to scrape it up it doesn't stick to the road it, it will just come right up but this year hasn't had been <coughs> there wasn't many major snowstorms that been ahead of us so but right. we've used it a few times on the main drag since worked well okay. any other questions great okay. so 24 the next yellow camp lights and beacons. Um, talked about this a couple of times. It's basically provide adequate street lighting for the town streets, roads, intersections, so so at an affordable cost. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing this year is, is uh, looking into hold your hats. The purchase of the street lights from National Grid. Currently, uh, National Grid rents the street lights with electricity to us for a flat fee of five to eight bucks a month per street light. Um, a, a number of towns have gone through a process of, of negotiating to buy the street lights from National Grid. <coughs> and you basically buy them for their depreciated value, which is about zero dollars. So you can buy the street lights for a very small amount of money, and then you're basically paying for the electricity. The unfortunate part of it is you're also paying for their ongoing maintenance. Mm. So. Uh, 
there was a conference on this subject recently. Unfortunately, I missed it, but I've got all the material from it, and I know several towns will be discussing this with. So it's a possibility we'll pursue that. What about the polls, Al? We won't own yeah. those. We would not own the polls, no. Um, but we would just we would buy the depreciated equipment and, and maintain it. By equipment, you mean the actual fixture? Yes. Great. So this budget was 180 last year, and it's up to 190. Is that because of? Wouldn't that go down because of the electricity that we're buying cheaper? You have to look at the FY12 expended. Good point. So we. That's, what, that's why I recommended a higher amount than the DPW requested. So <clears throat> in 2012 we spent 196. So we're. Because we're not paying for electricity. We're paying for rental. So, Get you both ways. so it's about a 3% decrease. Yeah. Any questions? No, I'm interested in the uh, concept of, of purchasing. I know we talked about it about a year or two ago, and I know that we'd indicated about seeing um, green technology with respect to lamps at the MMA. Um, mm -hmm. And I know um, I'm interested to see what kind of cost savings yeah. we could pro project. It's very a very interesting reading on, I, I can send to you if you like, on the different kinds of bulbs and it's got to do with their service life and... I trust you, Al. Oh, okay. What <laughs> type of bulbs here? <laughs> which one, which ones yeah. which people can see better with? It's interesting. Yeah. There, there's no incentive for National Grid to come with new technology that results in fewer <coughs> lights because the lumens are less and the electricity cost is less, yet the way street lights are designed now, they throw much more light in greater intervals and we also can be paying for lights even though people self report when street lights are out we're paying for lights that the light may have been off for a month or whatever yep. so at least in general way the inventory itself um, would be much more up to date in terms of what our actual dollar cost is in addition to all the other things that Al made but made about comments he made about maintenance but um, Again, the incentive isn't really there for us to have more state-of-the-art technology as far as the changes in lighting fixtures, and there's so many different ones now um, that it's definitely worth investigating. Great. John will head up that subcommittee. Okay. I can, I'll send that to you, John. <laughs> it is actually F63. It was actually just one thing. I had a conversation with a guy at MMA about this. It is actually kind of interesting. For example, light bulbs are getting so efficient now that one of the things the, 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 the fixture manufacturers have to take into account that snow won't melt on top of a light yeah, fixture. They don't generate enough heat. They don't generate enough heat because it's the use, so much of the energy is going into actually illuminating. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of subtleties in there that are, that are quite intriguing. Now you got this. another person on your so, committee. Anyways. I'll send him one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is kind of cool stuff. It's another facet that has to do with birds, but we'll go that way. Right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trans 63. Transfer station. <coughs> 33. It's Transfer 63. Uh, Department the 433. Oh, I mean, the these are the transfer. These yeah. are the enterprise enterprises the near the back. Yep. So, uh, transfer 63. Mission statement for the transfer station is to cost effectively dispose of all household waste while meeting the needs of the stakeholders in a clean and pleasant manner. Right. And the budget last year was 1.279, and this year it's 1.3. So it went up uh, $21,000, which is about oh, 6%, no. About 2, isn't it? 2%, right. <coughs> and uh, it's pretty flat right across the whole board. Any questions? From anybody? When was the last time we raised the price on the blue bags? <laughs> I'm not suggesting. I'm making a point. Was that over? Five, I'm making a good five point. Years. Five years ago? Yeah. So all the improvements we're seeing, all the operations down there, remember how it used to be that every year we'd be like, do we raise the bags or not? every year then Al and this team took over no longer an issue <coughs> nice job All right any other questions for the transfer runs well they, they, 
staff is all pleasant and it seems like we're we're still I mean that banner is, that was on the wall there was from several years ago but I assume we're still pretty efficient with our recycling yeah, I think we updated the banner didn't we the banner yeah we just we updated the banner with the um, the clothing that we get rid of and in something else with the transfer station the um, the guys that work there really do a good job and they really take pride in what they do um, they brought up to me before Christmas that Christmas was going <laughs> to fall on a Tuesday Christmas Day and then Wednesday and Thursday we're going to be days off and brought up that fact and said you know would be willing to work it you know work those two days off um, and keep the transfer station open for everybody to uh, just accommodate everybody and, and it was a really good idea I had spoken to Trisha about it she approved it and, and we went forward with it but we kept the transfer station open so those guys worked straight through just to handle all the crowds and everybody else so it was really uh, there's another it's example with the like tax the, stuff right that we do you know there are little things going on that are very customer focused that you know, I know on the day after I, I remembered it and I said, oh, this is nice, but it doesn't, doesn't really get the publicity that it probably should, so. Is that where you took my present? <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. Um, right where you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Kevin on the transfer station? Good. Thank All right, you. move on to sewer. Bob? Um, mission statement to uh, collection and treatment of wastewater in an environmentally sound and cost-effective manner to protect human health while meeting NPDES discharge permit and other regulated operating requirements. Expand capacity of the system to serve new customers by taking steps to eliminate or reduce groundwater INI. Maintain a high-quality effluent and meet all regulatory requirements. Thanks, Bob. The uh, budget Last year was 1.963, and this year it's 2.258. Uh, we do have the revenue number over here. Um, the majority of the increase is due to the increase in the debt for the um, projects that we've been doing. So um, the, uh, the budget is going up about $300,000, and the debt went up over $400,000. So that's the majority of the increase on that. Um, I assume that's mostly the I&I &I that we're doing or no, no, that would be uh, what would that for sewer? I&I well, &I goes to water, right? No, I &I no I &I sewer. I&I sewer. I &I sewer. sewer. It's, okay. Uh, water in the sewer. It is the uh, <clears throat> um, project that's our expansion project. project. In other words, we're getting debt, but we're not getting customers yet. Oh, I see. Okay. So we get revenue as they come on. So the funding <coughs> of this is is our water rate, our sewer rate. <coughs> so how it's are, calculated on water consumption, right. but it's a different rate. Oh. Right. So the volume of water is, and how Most our rates are still really low, as I remember our last meeting. Yeah, we. Uh, if you remember, we raised the rates a bit. We raised a five percent a year. A year. Yeah. I think we're going to come back in June, and and uh, the, the problem we had with sewer in the past was the rates were never raised. And then all of a sudden we had to make a big step change rates. So what we'd like to do is get into programmatic you know, slight increases each year, two, two and a half percent, to cover the uh, increases in, in costs. Okay. So we will come back in the spring uh, and suggest uh, for your consideration a modest minor increase in the rates. Right. And are they are they mirroring the water rates right now? Like when we increase at five percent, no, no. no. that's water. just water. There's not no correlation between the rate of water and the rate of sewer, but there the is volume. between the gallons of water. So the sewer rate is determined by how many gallons of water come to your home. And we have not adjusted the sewer rate in a number of years. We have not adjusted that in uh, 18, 24 months. So, yeah. 24 months ago we increased it. Okay. okay. Any questions on sewer? Nope. Anything you want to tell us? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Man, a few words. He fixed a big problem for the Mill Wharf today. Uh. You'll see a big hole in Front Street. <laughs> what was the problem? Obviously, Thanks, some kind of blockage. <laughs> no, it was a, uh, yeah, it was a break. Damaged from 1988 sewer that uh, 
he fixed it was causing problems for Mill Wharf. So <coughs> fix it. Could. So to Tony's point, if you look at this revenue sheet, they're dipping into retained earnings just to meet operating, which speaks yeah. to the fee. Nope. And because we, the capital plan recommends no sewer work, there's no capital for sewer in the FY14 budget. And until the revenue stream for the betterment starts to come in, um, the revenue <coughs> forecast is going to be very tight in terms of what we can and can't do. But I just want you to know that we're borrowing 124000 from the projections just to meet the operating budget. Right. But that is supposed to come online this in yes. FY14, right? But and I and I work, we'll continue. We have we have a we have still uh, money that we've that we had previously borrowed for I and I work that that's uh, available to us. So we will continue full stream ahead with I and I work and uh, solving this you know, spending money to figure out well, how we're going to solve this copper problem. Copper but it's, I guess, problem. back to Trisha's point, is this just a is this just a timing thing? No, is it's it's not going to be a timing thing because what happened is the betterment that is going to come in, which is going to be cash flow, is for Musquashikin. It's not for the entire sewer budget. So unlike I don't know how the revenue was handled in the past for sewer projects, but that revenue coming in of betterments is going to be apportioned. So if there's twenty thousand dollars that we get as an upfront payment and only one twentieth is going to be applied to the fiscal year budget and apportioned over the life to right. go to the debt service. So even though you're going to see a huge influx of cash, um, it's going to be apportioned accordingly for the debt associated with Musquashikit, which is why we need to have the discussion about the sewer rate to do these other things. Right. But the, the reason that it's short right now is because the debt has gone up without the revenue coming That's in. Correct. So That's correct. So next year, is it going to be flush because you'll be the getting the revenue in. should be able to meet the debt so that you don't have you're not taking from retained earnings so this this one hit on retained earnings should be level and then all future projects will have to be dealt with on rate right and so future projects are going to be limited by what the rate is to absorb that future debt because <coughs> a lot of the stuff that sewer is doing isn't just a new sewer line. It's the I and I. It's the other things. It's the copper, which is a huge problem that goes to the overall operation of the treatment plant, which is separate from betterments. However, we, and what the good one piece of good news is we will have 310 new customers right. revenue paying customers coming on board. So. Right, and that's a whole nother the revenue on right. top of the betterment. Right. You know, I, I don't want to get into a major discussion because it's quarter of nine, I think. But my question is, when did DEP come into this copper issue and saying that, you know, we're having the, the uh, Commonwealth and people, municipalities such as Town of Situates uh, having actually, copper issues? Well, quite a while ago, there, there have been uh, five-year <coughs> renewals where they, where they said, okay, we'll give you a, an interim operating limit. They, the, the limit they'd like us to reach is four parts per million. Four parts per million. Uh, it's got to be billion. billion. That's got to be billion. Billion. Yeah, it's billion. Copper. Um, our limit previous to this was 20 parts per billion. Our capability is to run around in the 10 part per billion range. So they had given us, I think, two five year periods when they said, okay, well, you can run. They give us an interim limit of 20 and an interim limit of 20. But then when they came, when we came up for renewal this year, they said, we're going to give you the interim limit for 20 for only five more years, and you have to have a solution for it. One of the solutions may, is a, an environmental study that the DEP was going to do five years ago to ascertain whether or not the creatures that are in the, <coughs> the stream that were where effluent goes, in fact, are intolerant. Okay. The DEP decided they would do that, but they'd only do that for upland species. They wouldn't do it for marine life. So now we're on the cuff to go do it for marine life. So, you know, it's one of these things, agencies working kind of in the same direction, but all of a sudden different paces, and we're left kind of pulling the horses. So we have to do a marine species analysis to see if they really, one of, one of our hopes is that we've discovered that the species don't require this low limit. Uh, and the other leg of it is we have to change uh, the where our discharge point is. We can discharge into a big flowing stream, and we wouldn't have the same problem. 
And the third solution is a significant 12 to $15 million investment in the plan. So we have five years to sort out those three things. So that's the challenge for us is to do the work to get us to where we need to do in five years so we know what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, here's a bit of a flyer question. What's the elevation of our treatment plant? It's about, what, 10 feet maybe? 10? 13? Okay. Above sea level? Based on the nail on the sure. telephone pole? Yeah, based on the <laughs> nail on the telephone pole. <laughs> we have three different datums, so yeah, right, very... Right. Yep. Yeah, it's still good. going downhill. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I caught that, Jim. <laughs> I don't know Sorry. that we have a big flowing river, do we? Well, you well, get farther the north river. Then you get the north river. All right. And there are some other issues for that, too. Type it over to the south side. Speaking of, of water. Moving on to water, then. Let's go way upstream to water. <clears throat> I should have been first, huh? Uh, <clears throat> mission statement. Uh, provide safe, sanitary, taste, tasty drinking water in sufficient quantities and pressure to meet personal, commercial, and firefighting needs of the community in reasonable and sustainable rates. Tasty. I like that. <laughs> Due to the fires, though, we've had some, some issues out in the system. Unfortunately, your, your department takes a lot of the brunt of the beating with the brown water and um, it's unfair for you guys to pay the price for what is it a hundred years worth of somewhat neglect but um, you guys do a great job there Thank um, you. just getting to the numbers real quick um, the budget was 2.721 last year it's 2.792 this year <coughs> it went up seventy thousand dollars um, Look at the debt line. Yeah, that's, well, technical services, all right. So debt went up $100,000, 110000 So something came down thirty. Um, this isn't one where, no. So chemicals and labs is the majority of the decrease. Went from 309 to 250 so did we just over budget in 13 or have we, are we doing things more efficiently so the chemicals are correct not as yeah. less, surface water. less surface water too it's the wells yep so you mentioned that earlier the <coughs> don't have to process yeah. the stuff that's coming from now is that because we don't have sprinklers anymore or is that that would be a minor contributing factor okay no, that would be one of the contributing factors. Conservation. Conservation. Anything that research. reduces the draw on the plant, reduces the need to run the plant, reduces the chemicals. And then, so we're producing more water from the wells. Uh, Jim has rebuilt some wells, uh, and we're able to use the plant less. And that reduces our chemistry, chemicals, and our uh, power. Well, it doesn't show up in power. But. So how, the, the plant knows if water is fresh or if it's we know by what we pump from what areas if it's groundwater versus surface water there's a percentage so you know how much to process it correct based on where it's coming from yes yep. Yep. someday I'd like to have it an 80 20 if it's possible Whoa. you know <laughs> where, where are we now uh, we're at right now we last year we were around 70 like 30 and this year we're we've dropped because we lost a couple wells during the year that we had to uh, freshen up and do actually a loop through for a contact time for bacteria so uh, we need new uh, DEP regulations on the contact times with the, uh, the well itself so getting that back online is uh, so we'll get back up on the uh, percentage so it's 70 30 now yeah well right now it's like 60 it's like 60 it's, uh, 62 percent or so 63 percent and then you know, 20 something on the uh, surface water, 26% or so. Hmm. And the rest we purchased from Hummer Rock, about 8% of it. All right. I got a question. Old Oak and Bucket Pond, how deep is that? Um, it varies. It could be in the areas about 12 feet or so. Oh, I ask because uh, yeah, this goes to, <laughs> Jim, it doesn't deal with you, but I, obviously recently people were skating on the pond 
And I was thinking to myself, you know, it seemed rather premature. It hadn't iced, to me, it didn't ice over long enough. Nothing happened, but then there was an incident over in Hanover, and, and I was just thinking, you know, do we have signs up for purposes of liability telling people That's stay off the pond? You know what? If they go in, it, more or less because I saw some people dropping the kids off to go skating and with a shovel, and I'm thinking, you know, something could happen. I mean, three feet water, four feet hypothermia. Just a concern I had. I was thinking it was crazy, but, you know. You put the signs up. Is that acknowledging the problem, Yeah, it's though? a reverse liability issue. You can put up no trespassing, but you can't put up because no you skating up the meeting, because then it? you admit there's a potential liability. I, look, I, look I want to know about that. I don't know about that. I, I think <laughs> it's an insurance. Giving a notice requirement. Open and uh, open along the way, the DEP is actually going to chime in on this that because uh, there are public water supplies, there will probably won't be any skating, fishing, any public use. Close. Yeah, that would be a shame. Yeah, it would you be. know, I, I look this out there all day way. long. Yeah, when I went by a couple point. Sundays ago, it was pretty neat. And to John's point, I saw some kids out there, one or two, it was like frozen for one night. And I didn't I see a police officer out there? And so, you know, he was there for a reason. I think he let him continue to skate. A couple days later, it was filled with kids. So, and, and Jimmy, I see kids out, the same little ones running across with their fishing rods. It, that would be a shame if they couldn't do that. That you would know. be. I agree. We actually added a, uh, you know, chain link fence out front there just to keep the geese at bay, you know. Right. But we added a, um, a gateway so kids could have access if they needed it, you know, boats or you know, to do some fishing. Some Can I just say one other thing? If you, I don't know if you guys have had a chance, but Joe and I went once. Jimmy took us through the treatment plant. I did that. And did you? It, it's, it's amazing. It's, it really is. It really is. If and uh, you know, something to see, and you have a better appreciation. Oh, 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 and that goes the same with everything. I've just, you know, the, I think the water treatment plant, and I've seen one of the wells was the last thing I've seen. Obviously, we've been to sewer and transfer station, but it's, it's. Um, Something you should do, you know, when you have a chance. Please come down and visit us. All right. We have Water Week, uh, probably the second week of May. It's going to be open to the public, and we're still working on the um, input on that with the Water Resource Committee to see how we can set that up. Great. And just to, to go to the revenue projections, it looks like there's a $47,000 surplus in terms of the revenue projections in the budget, So, and the retained earnings has about $300,000 in it. So which is below threshold, so there's no water capital either this year. Same shoes. One water pipe is not 300000 so. There you have it. Yep. So, but we did just increase the water rates, and we have probably for five or six years, so, you know, that's how you pay for these projects to get rid of brown water. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Great Good job. Thank you all for coming. So, I have one, can, I have a, can I just say one thing overall here, Al? Al, yes. to you guys. I just want people to know, you know, I, I'm on email a lot, and constituents email us a lot, and I just want to say publicly, it'll be 1030 at night, and I'll email Al something from a constituent or a question I have, and he answers them back usually that night, if not early the next morning, and he's forwarded on to one of you guys, and then you guys get on it, and you answer it right back. And your responsiveness to citizens, not just us, is, you know, remarkable. And I do get comments from people at Village Market about all four of your, all four of your groups and everything that you're doing. And your customer service is, is just great. And then even other things like there's a water main break, whenever that happens. You know, we get a notice from Kim. You know, Kim hears about it, and she sends us an email. And I, just as a, you know, water commissioner's selectman. And then usually within 10 minutes, the whole town-wide email blast goes out. And I just hope people realize how, how important that is and how, what effort goes into that. Because in, in addition to diagnosing the problem, someone's got to write that press release. Someone's got to get over to IT. I'm sure it's got to get approved by Al and or Tricia and out the door and everything. And it's just remarkable all the moving pieces that all four of you with, with Al are able to do. And I just hope people appreciate it because it's, you look at these budget numbers, they're big numbers, but, you know, you drinking water, sewage treatment, buildings and grounds, highways, the roads, transfer station, it's really the interface of what we all, all the citizens work with is all you guys. It's just a remarkable job you do. I, Thank you. I agree. And I, Al gets back to me in five minutes or so. I, I yeah. really appreciate it. 
Oh, I was at seven minutes. He must love you <laughs> two minutes more. Well, thanks for all your, yes, thanks. all your great work, and thanks for the budgets. You do a lot with the, you know, the limited resources that you get. Thank Good you. stuff, guys. That is Good stuff. it for our budget reviews tonight. So we'll move on to item number um, five. Actually, we'll give Al a second to out. So item number five is the uh, public building committee for review of the uh, schematics from Turkey Brown. You guys want to come up? So just as a quick overview, um, we've hired consultants to come in and look at gates and its uh, um, the stability of the building and the, the structure itself. We got some money from CPC and they looked at the historical part of the building and then we took uh, $15,000 or so from the um, $375,000 article to look at the buildings and they looked at the, the parts of the structure that were not Mm. Um, historical and now they've come back to us with three or four different scenarios which has gone before the uh, building uh, public building committee and you're coming to us with your feedback after looking at these plans is that correct uh, I think we had a meeting here um, a couple of weeks ago um, regarding that and uh, we were asked at that time to uh, just, uh, I believe the architects want to cost out uh, two proposals, is two of the options of, I think, the four that were presented. And we discussed at that time which options <coughs> that we thought that the um, architects should pursue in terms of coming up with costs for doing those options. I believe that was the case. God bless you. Yeah, I think that's what I said. But yes, we want you to look at it, look at the plans, give us your well, feedback. Well, we, we did give feedback. Mm -hmm. We recommended that uh, three options be looked at. And that was sent to the board. Whether you've had the opportunity to look at those three options or not, or made a selection of any one of them is what it's all about at this point. Okay. Do you want to tell us the rationale behind selections? Is it A, C, and? It was A, D, uh, I'm sorry, A, C, and D, B, and, um, A, B, and D. A, B, and D. Those were the three. So is, is the intention of this tonight, Tricia, to actually come up with the um, request for what we want Turkey Brown to do or right, are we so just they presented the various scenarios it went to the review of the Public Building Commission and there's more options here but their contract calls to do full cost um, workups of two and so the per Public Building Commission has provided their input and recommendations of which ones they want to go forward but it's up to the board also to accept that recommendation or vote something the same or different right but are, is the goal for us talking about this tonight to come up with plans one and two yes, and you say? Should. Yeah, two. that's what your motion right. is to vote plan A, B, okay. D, or whatever. Two. Out of Great. The well, why don't we start by looking at A? Um, <coughs> and you did, the board did get a review of these from the architect previously. Yeah, we've looked at these. Yeah. Um, there's three pages to each one, one for each floor. A was one of the ones that the uh, building committee recommended. It's one where the senior center is on the first floor in the, what wing is that, Sean? Uh, newest? The, the back wing. The back wing, I don't know what it's called. It's called the C. I think it's no. C wing's the newest to the right. Yeah, okay. and it's the B wing. So the B wing. And then it has the C wing being eliminated for town parking. Correct. So this was one of the ones that you guys chose. Is there something that you, well, you like particularly about this, or 
this uh, actually generates the most space um, Appreciate the color. in terms of the, uh, the whole project. And uh, there obviously is going to be, in, even in looking at these schemes here, that the costing is going to be based on these schemes, but that not, is not necessarily, as the project goes ahead, exactly the way this thing is going to really operate. Okay. Because you're going to get an architect in here, whether it's the same architects or another architect, who's going to begin to plan these spaces, and so they may not all end up exactly as you see them on these sheets. Right. So uh, the cost that's going to probably be generated for this, <coughs> uh, unless I'm mistaken, is, is really almost on a per square foot basis for doing the renovations because it's very difficult to go through and say now, that that senior center section is going to cost X amount of dollars. We have an awful lot of demolition to do throughout the building. Uh, so the A, A building, or the A1 scheme, is probably at this point going to be the most costly in terms of dealing with this program. I, I would hope that it's going to be more than just we're using 75,000 square feet multiplied by $200 and add the demolition, I, I think it's probably going to be a little more detailed than that. Well, they're only going to be, be using this information here. I mean, that's about all they can be doing. So you can do the kind of estimating that did to, to uh, make it a school, but still, in the end, the result is, you know, when you change the entire heating system here, uh, the detailed th estimate they did for the school is based, you know, particularly on use as a school. But this is going to be... Uh, depend more on how these spaces are going to be finished in the end. Right. The so did you like this one the best? Well, if you had to rank them, you liked A, C, and D. No, A, B, and D. A, a B, and D. A, so B, A was ranked where on your list? Uh, at the bottom. So this is number three from you guys. Why? Simply because it produces more area than you really need for the building. It produces more space that's really going to be used in the end for the town. But it knocks down a whole wing for parking. It's still producing more space. Producing more space. It's, can I jump in here? Yeah. The school the as it exists. Wing on the, on, to the back of the building. Hold on for one second, Sean. What were you going to say? Um, the, as, a, as a school exists now, isn't it about 90,000 square feet? Yes, it is. And I remember in discussions with uh, Durkee Brown, they thought our needs, Trisha, and you guys were there, 70,000 yeah, of all the people 70, involved. So if you knock this off, theoretically, you're getting the space that you need. Theoretically. But you didn't like A because it was too much space? Yeah, and also in terms of some of the arrangements of the space. Okay, so give me an example is the senior center, which is on two floors. But it's on the first floor, and then there's a section on the second, second floor. floor. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. And there's actually a community center up there too. Yes. So I'm a little confused, if I may. May. I thought more space was a good thing. Because that means more money. That's all. Means we and can whether you really need it or not is another question. Right, but I mean, sort of planning for the future and and room to grow and. I'd much rather have a buffer in terms of available space. Well, the other, so two, the other two schemes are, are very similar in terms of the area. Okay, so space isn't an issue then. No. Okay. So, so it's you not said due to space. The reason you put this one third is because it's too much space and the senior center is on two floors. Yeah, that's one of the you know one of the reasons. We can go through all the reasons. Well, just give me your top two or three. Well, you just said space actually isn't any different. I think we'll find that when we look at the next one. But is there something else in this schematic that you didn't like? Just for each one, if you give us a, the two pluses and two minuses, then we'll be informed. You, you were going to say something before. Before I, I, I need to ask your name, and I, I know just Tony Donofrio. Uh, yeah, I, I was just saying that the additional space that they're putting onto the back of the building <coughs> here, when Tony was talking about too much space and we've added all this in the back and taken down the wing on the side here where it's now providing parking. Right. What did we put on in the back? 
It is the senior center. No, but that that's on there. On A. That's existing. That's, that's existing. existing currently, correct. The one thing that's added, they've taken down the C wing and they've added a new addition on where new the entrance. C a new entrance rather, and that's yeah. the extent of it. The new entrance is the addition. The addition it controls a, a new elevator and it entrance into the building. Uh, any any other things that stood out positively or negative about this one in your committee? No. Okay. I like this one the best. As do I, Mr. Chair. Yeah. All right. So let's. I will go. say the one thing, two things I, I comment on. I, uh, Tony, you'd mentioned it. I, I saw the bifurcation, if you will, between the senior center and the community center. That was the second floor, which didn't seem to make any sense. A shotgun, you know, as, a, as opposed to trying to mix the space there. The other thing I thought was, which was a good thing, was the new entrance that mm -hmm. wasn't on the other ones because I think it's important if you're going to have parking on that side sure. to have some kind of um, a better entryway mm -hmm. yeah. for that side, side of the building. But. But when, I, when I looked at it, I thought the senior center, like on the second floor, may be the offices. Right. You know, where you can have conferences, legal conferences, or medical conferences, or staff offices, whereas this space down here would be more functional space for events and functions. Yeah, I just think it's important, as sort of Tony said earlier, or hinted at, or was getting in the direction of, is these are not architectural plans we're looking at up here, folks. Right? These, are, these are sort of medium-scale schematics, or I don't even think not a schematic. I, um, They're conceptual. Con that's what I was looking for. Okay. Thank you. It's late for us. You know, medium-scale concept. So I liked the fact that they had the senior center on two floors because there was more space for the senior center. And I think, you know, overall, I don't how think, they – I don't think that that's the case. How they parse it up is, you know, sort of up to that. I, the, the, supposedly – they have put within these plans the Roughly same the kind same of space, space okay. for each one of the. Uh, uh, I stand corrected, or I sit corrected. Okay. One of the things that um, the seniors articulated during several meetings they attended was to feel like they had their own independent space. Mm -hmm. So I think that was trying to capture. And I was saying it's perfect. And I, I think your comments are really valid. Is that even though this is attached to a much larger building it can be completely sealed off by just I think an elevator <coughs> and an entrance yeah. from the rest yeah. of the administrative mm -hmm. offices so the seniors would feel like it's their own that's their place. own place right. um, which I, I think you know as we go forward it might you know wherever it ends north south east west or wherever the building because I see it's in the the front part and another is that they maintain that sense maybe of autonomy even though there'll be opportunities for cross you know, sharing with recreation and things like that so why don't we jump to B real quick which you didn't like that was one of the no, B, picks ABD. Oh. ABD. C, C you no didn't one. like I'm sorry C, C we didn't, didn't like at all so we'll go to we'll go to B then yeah which has the senior center over in the C wing that's correct and it also, uh, one of the other things it does is it, uh, uh, it uh, adds parking uh, by removal of some of the uh, B-wing. Hmm. Oh, yeah, you chop part of that off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't really uh, wedded to this one because you're cutting off the uh, B-building maintaining the slab C section, which to me is kind of should go. It's sort of a useful life. It makes sense that they're cutting half that building of right. the back of out. Of a brick building. Of a brick building. I, I think it would be kind of weird to see well, the cut in half. One of the things that we looked at in this uh, point was that the, the seniors had their own little thing over in that corner, totally accessible away from all of the rest of the activities that are going on in the town hall. And again, <coughs> I think I have to point out that even if you look at this plan or that plan, that whenever they get an architectural firm in here to go really at the planning of this, they're not going to resemble any of these two schemes, right. three schemes whatsoever. The only thing you're looking for right now is an approximate cost. And that's only going to be done on a limited basis because it's an awful, you know, if you say, well, if we're going to move the town hall spaces into here, 
we're going to have to almost completely demolish right. everything in the building because we're going to have to rebuild everything in the building to create offices and so forth. So we're looking at we're looking at it from 10,000 feet, where, as John mentioned, out you're going to you're going to take a piece of this building away and leave this building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we seem to be focused on the senior center because that's taken up a big portion of it. I don't think we really care a ton about what office is the accountant's office compared to the. Um, right, it's just the square footage. Treasurer's office. I was wondering though, on the, this, this, this scheme, even though it's showing the. Um, what letter? B. On um, B. Okay. Even though it's showing the senior center and the B complex now, I wonder if functionally it could still be located there, but it wouldn't be a rehabilitated B complex. It would be a new wing, sure. essentially. Sure. It could be that. Right. It could be because, that. I mean, it does, like to your point, the assets you mentioned in this, mm -hmm. it does create all those yeah. independent things, too. It's just not in that ugly section, but could be re engineered in a different way. Yeah, the, the parking the, looks much. Less here. Yeah, well, the parking is going to be an issue in any case. Oh, but in any case for this scheme, any one of these schemes. Well, not if you knock out that whole wing. Right. It's still, it's still going to be an issue. You know, the only you good can thing knock is out the, the wing, but it's not going to be enough for the parking. Near it's going the to be seniors. Quiet. The reason it's not an issue now is because it's a junior high school and right, no one drives. Right. But there's a the lot other, of okay. land in the back there. A lot of yeah. land. Without taking a track or the no, tennis you, courts, you, is there? Are you going to take the, the fields and then you're... But be to the right of the field, if you're going straight back, um, back to the little red schoolhouse and the field is on the right, the, no, you have the tennis courts there. there. But no, what you're saying, Tony, is near the red schoolhouse, the old high school, mm -hmm. between the high school and actually the track, there's land back there as well as the oh, existing yeah. parking. Okay. So in other words, you could and, push and, it back and further. And the street... They've talked for a long time about where the common is and the <coughs> entrance there and losing one of those streets, actually, yep. so that the traffic flow pattern is. So there's opportunities in the back of that building that can be re-engineered. Yeah. Right. The, the other thing in this, uh, to make a comment on this B1 on the third floor, for some reason, and I don't know what the reason was, they've noted the, uh, that the... Uh, entire third floor is going to become a community center which doesn't make any sense to me at all and it only proves to me that this is enough space in this building for the town hall to operate yeah everything that we've been talking everything about everything you yeah. need yeah well every town department's center. current uses was increased by at least 10 percent 20 percent 25 right 25 uh, yeah and there's still extra space left there. still extra good space. All right, so let's go to C. D. D. Let's look at every one of them. Oh, you want to look at C? I agree. Look at C, just to, because you really said no, and I can see why right out of the gate, but at least let's explain it to everybody why. I don't think I brought C along. <laughs> well, John, I mean, John, why don't you describe C? Yeah, well, C is a, looks like a depiction of um, the existing um, old high school as well as the, I guess it's the A wing, which is the gymnasium. Both the C, which is the first flat you know slab is gone I have, I have B, the original but not that yeah. the B wing which is the building that goes off the back towards the uh, tennis courts uh, and the track is gone and it's just um, it? gone. yeah so the gym is actually gone no uh, I think page two has the gym the gymnasium oh, okay. remains Remains. but it's just a sh uh, basically a shotgun building going from the gymnasium across mm -hmm. to uh, to the other end and the senior first floor above the gymnasium. Yeah. Split with the uh, archives. But the gym. How many square feet to see? The, I think the problem with uh, C is it's like the smallest of the, the entire group. Sure. It's one of the reasons yep. why we and women. Yeah. About how many square feet is that what Mr. Campagna is looking up? I don't know. Yeah, there's no, I don't have a total for that. C was 40,000 40, 40, square feet, and that's the smallest of the whole package. So do we all agree that this is not one that we don't want to pursue? Agreed. Okay. C. C is gone. And the last one is D, which kind of replicates A to some extent where they take out the C 
C-Wing and put parking to the right. It, uh, yeah, this one puts the senior center again over the um, gymnasium. Over the gymnasium. Yeah. Under the, under Archives. the gymnasium. Under the gym. Yeah. Under the gym, it's all the yeah. You know, when you walk in. Yeah. And then they, they, they use the entire uh, B wing for a community center. Again, I, I'm not quite sure what the community center is that we're really talking about. Um, and the third floor uh, contains the meeting rooms and, so, uh, and such. But it does allow you that parking space uh, that you had in the uh, A building uh, by taking down the uh, C wing. So of the of the of all of the schemes, uh, ones that we really came down to um, look at and recommend would be B one and. D one. So, b which one did you rank one and two? I'm B. Do you like D the best or C the B the best? Either one of those would. But B, B is but B is the one with the half building on the rear. Right. Yeah. And I, I just so I'm going to differ with you on that one. So, but essentially, A and D are the same except they've moved functionality around. Senior center's here instead of here. Yes. Um, John brought up a great point that I didn't look at, but I think the auditorium is an important component. To me it is. To me too. Um, that's in A, or is in that's D? In a, that's in D, and it's in C, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but forget C. My whole point is the only one that it's in right now is is D. I presume, given the fact that you've mentioned Tony earlier, again, if you want to put things around, you can. Yeah. It's a square footage is what we're talking about. So it's, if we yeah, want to. Yeah. You know, you can do anything with any one of these schemes, but as they're presented, uh, B1 and D1 came out ahead of A1. I will say the other thing I think that's uh, very um, salient is the idea that if, if a senior center were to be placed underneath the gymnasium, mm -hmm. we'd want to, I'd want to know whoever goes under there if you're going to hear anything above you and presumably well, that's you're obviously, going to. Yeah, that's something that has yeah. to be looked at. There are yeah. different ways of doing the acoustics that would solve that problem. I do believe that, that if you put the senior center back here, it's more secluded than underneath gymnasium. the gym. Yeah. Just because the entrance you know you can have your own entrance back here yep. your own parking back here as opposed to here it's it's not as easy to get into that building you got to come all the way over to here where there's no parking that's there is access here do you recall what, what what's the square footage of the sea wing is it 8000 square feet no it's uh, i think it's 18 it's no way the C wing, eighteen thousand square feet. I think it was the whole with the C wing. It's ninety thousand square really? feet, yeah. and when you back 18? it out, it's seventy-three thousand square feet. That's a lot. C wing is so thirteen thousand. Close. Uh, <coughs> according to this, is uh, thirteen thousand eighteen gross square feet. That's taken to the exterior walls, not use usable. So why don't we? Um, I guess what we should do is ask him. You know, what Tony said, if they're just doing a real rough estimate on the pricing, then A and D are very similar from the, just the structural aspect of the building. Nothing internally, but externally. You know, I don't know if we want to, you know, B and A or C are different because they're you're cutting off a different part of the building. I assume they're going to look in the demolition of half of the B wing. But, but why would we even entertain making a building smaller? Well, you're making a smaller footprint. I mean, just really. 
Well, it d th this one doesn't take away the C wing. But it chops the B wing. Right. Uh, or yeah. the, the, you know. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me because that's an old brick building. This is a wooden add-on. Well, that one on the right, you lean on it, it's going to go away. The, the one on the back, cutting it in half, that's substantial, and that's prime. I mean, I'm not a builder, guys, right? But, I mean, that to me seems prime to include for the various reasons of privacy for entrances, and it's a huge area, and it's continuous. I guess my point would be you wouldn't want to price out A and D because they're probably very similar. I, I realize that's what you're going with it, and I was going to say it seems to me that A and D are actually identical with the exception that the entryway, that's it, on the side of, um, of the building where the C wing is on plan A. Tony, if you're looking at Plan A, there's that entryway I talked about. Other than that, the building space is all the same. Unless, mm -hmm. as John said, they're going to actually price out what it's going to cost to put an auditorium in. Yeah, if that you know, goes they, in, that are they going to get to the? That's in D. Correct. Correct. Are they going to get into the details of? Okay, in this room where we've got this, this, and this, and. Well, I don't know. Well, do you have any what, idea? I mean, that's what? why I like D. That's what would happen actually is if you have. An auditorium or something. You know, if you're going to just put offices back there, the cost for offices is much less than putting an auditorium in, obviously. Right. And the, the question then is, which is more important? Would an auditorium service better than a group of offices or smaller spaces? I mean, that's it's it's so in a way it's so arbitrary that. Well, it's just the it's beginning stages. This no, is, I understand that, but what I'm saying is that costing this out is not going to be done in a great way. I mean, if you look back at the estimate they did of the school, if you look at it and, and, and really study how they did it, it's, it's really arbitrary. The estimate of what school, Tony? When, when he was talking about what, what it would cost to leave uh, the school, as a school, oh, school okay. as it okay. is. Yeah. But that, I mean, that's all we can expect at this stage. Mm. You know, we're just trying to find out, is it, is it $2 million or is it $22 million? You know, they're going to give us, they're going to give us a ballpark number. Well, that's what yeah. it is. It's, yeah. I mean, you're looking at a ballpark number. Okay, great. Does anyone have any other questions for them? Oh, thank you. That's, great, thanks that's for helpful. your input. Well, we got to make a motion here. All right. Right. Well, so I'm going to move A and D. A and D. I'll second it. And a second. And uh, here's the reason. It's because when I look at the B plan, the idea of chopping that off, cutting out the back, didn't make sense to me. I, I realize, of course, when I looked at the C wing and maintaining it, I'm thinking that doesn't make sense. But then I hadn't thought about, obviously, constructing new, which would make sense, a new building on that that side. Um, but that's going to create parking issues, which is the reason why I went back to A and D and figured A and D. I guess the only, the only question I would have is, do you have to do both? Like, do we want to pay them to do two things that are well, probably you, identical? You get into differences with the auditorium, and I think it sends a clear message that we want to maximize the footprint and all those sorts of things. I mean, if you look at B and C, B and C have, have in my opinion, fundamental difficulties. As these gentlemen in their, in their committee pointed out, C is a really non-starter for various reasons. And, and to me, at least, B is a non-starter for various reasons. So we're left with A and D. Let her rip. A is about the best. I'd like to see something that I don't see in any of them. I'd like to see half the C wing remain. I know it's ugly and everything, and it's you know it's on the ground. But I love the idea of having the seniors have their own space, but yet they're connected. They have use of the you know if the cafeteria was to stay in that area and things like that. And it, parking is going to be an issue that's why i say you maybe take some of the sea wing but i don't want to reinvent the wheel i mean well, let's ask him let's ask him to look into that too i mean why not well why don't we why, why can't we do this have a and d or for all intents and purposes one and the same the exception that i see is i'd like to see an auditorium incorporated in in, in either one of those plans the thing about plan b is it does keep that c wing and um you know have them do i don't care a or d with the caveat that you consider an auditorium, and then do B and price it out. Yeah, because an auditorium has never been raised. They didn't program, because this is the first I've heard that mm -hmm. you wanted an auditorium there. But we can certainly go back, go back and minutes. ask them mm -hmm. to do that. 
I mean, the sea wing. Well, I think the sea wing is is such a structurally deficient well, thing I think anyway. Sean's it's probably easier just to tear it down and build something new there. Okay, if, but maybe that's you know so I mean, that's up to these guys, and that might be the case. But you know, to John's point, it might get you. You know, the seniors, you know, they know how many square feet they need, and if we can, you know, do something there, provide some parking. Maybe John can. So why don't we say know, A and D, A and D, and explore what they could do to include how about, uh, something in the C, in the current C area. How about just D, and come up with something where you keep half of the space of the C wing in a new structure. In theory, I'm okay with that, but the issue is, is that would require them to put in an auditorium. What if an auditorium is? Auditorium is in D. I know. But what if an auditorium is just way too much money or whatever? I don't know. There's going to be a line that says auditorium, I right. assume. Right. Say alternate, alternate auditorium. Yeah. But basically, again, what you're doing is basing an estimate on a very, very preliminary plan. And in the end, you may be talking about, in, in the scheme which cuts part of the B wing yeah. down of yeah. keeping that in any case. Yeah, yeah. When you start to do the planning, I and mean, then when you really go into the planning, it's probably going to. Um, so instead of two, uh, instead of two full plans, we'll say look at D and explore what you can do with C, C wing. Correct. A portion. Um, if I can just interject with one other thought in this uh, in the same line of thinking, since as Tony was saying, it, this is so conceptual. A lot of the work is going to be done on a square foot basis. We can tell them to work up pricing for scheme A1 and include what a square foot cost would be if we maintained the C wing to uh, maintain it as a, uh, the future senior center. And I that think could Sean's be done point very was easily. Yeah, but, but that could be done very easily um, with a separate line item on scheme A1. Or D, sure. for mm -hmm. that matter, as well, right? Right. Be, yeah. be applicable to all, all of them. Yeah, but right. Sean, I think Sean wants only portion of the sea wing so that there's more parking over there. To try to have the, some of the best of both worlds. If the seniors don't need all 13,000 square feet, but, you know, 10 would be ideal. Gives us a little bit of parking and, you know, realizing it probably has to be leveled and startled, but the footprint, you know, is there. Trisha, do we have any contractual obligations here to give them actually two full, two full plans? Or is there discussions with them we could have them do, you know, one with a little more creativity on this? Yeah, I can ask. I mean, the problem is I can't increase the contract anymore. Because Correct. Because it's already at 25% over the original 56. Yeah. So, but, I mean, I, I'm, I'm certainly happy to ask the question. Um, because it, it sounds like I'm hearing A and is it D with some tweaking with a couple of alternates, essentially, no. right? Yeah. I think it's A or D. So <coughs> I think it's D plus a auditorium. new one that uses a portion of the seaway. Which uh, Tony uh, D'Onofrio was suggesting, if we can get square footage for what, or I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Campagna was talking about uh, uh, square footage for a build out. A so once foot. you get an idea of what the square footage is, it doesn't uh, really I'm matter. I'm sorry. So it's D. D. Mm -hmm. And then another one altogether. Right. That just takes the A and D with an alternate. I don't think we have to do both A and D. Okay. I think they're the same footprint. I don't care. Do you want to do A and D or just? <laughs> I, I think here's here's the way I look at it, and I think Tony's mentioned it. It really doesn't matter between A and D. When you begin to shift, shift things around, that yeah, they're going to be costs. We don't know what, that are, what they are. This is a preliminary uh, step forward. Sean has raised the issue, can we use a portion of the sea wing? Not all of it, but a portion of it. Mr. Campagna has indicated that can we get, based on using that, a square footage cost. So if we know per square footage it's going to cost us $250 per square foot, whether we have 10,000 square feet or 20,000 or 13,000 square feet, doesn't matter. You just get the cost on it, and we'll be able to apply it. Right. And, number. And, and the reason I was only saying about an auditorium, and I think you have, is that we know that's going to be an additional cost. So that's in Plan D, which is the reason why I wanted Plan D, so we can get that cost. And that makes sense. So I think let's driving it back together, I'd say my suggestion, Rick had said A and D with the concept, can we get a square footage cost for the C wing? To me, that would be fairly easy. It should, yeah, it should, it should be, be very easy to do. To do it. 
It's, in fact, it's I wouldn't even necessarily go square footage. I would just say and have them further examine the flexibility of using uh, the C wing. And it being a one story I building, it should it. be no, or one story wing, it, costs more. it yeah. shouldn't be any trouble at all. Okay, let's have a motion. Move the board select and vote to direct Durkee Brown to provide full one. cost estimates for Plan D. D as in, D as in dog, just make sure we're here. Full cost estimates for Plan D and further to uh, consider uh, incorporation of the C wing, the right hand wing, or portions of it, either on a square footage cost basis or any other means. Are you withdrawing your previous yeah, motion? We'll do, yeah, the other, well, we'll draw the other one. Because I was throwing it out for discussion. Well, I second it. That's the oh, one. sorry. That's right. <laughs> All right. First one's whacked. That's the second one. Did you get that, Kim? I did. Trisha, did you understand that? or? Yep. Do you have any input? Nope. Good. All right. Second. Second. I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, Thank good. you guys for your help. All right. Thanks. Thank you for waiting around. Uh, <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Cool. I now have to convince my wife that that's where I was. <laughs> she should she be watching yeah. TV. <laughs> you got proof of it, Tony. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just move on to item number six, which is the um, vote to accept some donations. Move the board selectman vote to accept the kind donations of one, the FDR Junior Memorial Foundation of $2,000, and two, the Situate Rotary Club for $1,000 on behalf of the Situate Council on Aging. Second. Point of order. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I know we don't need one. Tony. But we did through four nine, and we're going to do that. But I've already but told that. Can I ask a question to Kim? Yeah. Kim, I, I see the motion has um, FDR. I wasn't too sure. The backup said uh, JDR. Do you know if, um, I assume it's not Franklin Delano Roosevelt. That's the thing. I assumed it might be the Reedy Memorial. I it assume. is. So I want to make sure we clarify Thank you. that. Good catch, and if you can just JDR say that, okay. what it is. Yep. Good. That is the Reedy's, Reedy Family Foundation <coughs> John for um, their father, the pastor, yep. John. Yep. Not that he was in good company in my mind with FDR too. So there's a motion. Someone second it? Yep, we second it. Yes. Sean second it. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous, 4 0. There's a. Move the board select and vote to accept donations made from July 1st, 2012 to December 31st, 2012, as submitted by the town accountant on behalf of the town situate. Second. Uh, of course, uh, second by Mr. Harris. She left. Are these. Um, we got all the, the kind of general ledger entries for these. Are these where people check their tax bill for donations? No, it's just Meg um, did it to let you know what the auditors require in terms of the audit trail for donations and want to show you how we run them and what the balances were and how many there were. So, for instance, there's in uh, someday there was a $10,000 deposit. Was was that somebody gave us ten thousand dollars or is that? Yeah, it looks like. Uh, that it says was August four. receipts. Yes, in the council and aging. Yes. Where am I? Oh, that's a grant. So grants are included in this as well. No, where where are you looking at? I'm looking at page one. This is the K nine one. That's a good example. Top oh, yeah. So the headings the are up there. So this is the Course Foundation grant account. <clears throat> that people make donations into. Okay, so that so they're all so you donate and then course gives grants to families to attend <coughs> programming or go to the sailing class or things like right. that. So the money came in through the course foundation and then we with donation made to the course foundation. Right. Yeah. So there's another one here. This is the PTO donations. Okay. I didn't look at the headings on them. So what are we, Tricia, what are we doing by this motion? Are we, I mean, we've always accepted the donations. Is it just categorizing them? Library. No, no, no. It's just, as I said, Meg just wanted you to see it informationally because this is what we report to the auditors. Okay. okay. So, and we have a policy now where various departments were getting donations, recreation and stuff. But right. they really, it's up to the board to decide whether or not to formally accept a donation. Right. I mean, it's a semantic kind of thing, but it's really your role because you want to make sure, you know, you agree with the purpose and intent. So they notify by letter and you see them from the recreation right. that they've received these gifts. 
Yeah, I was reading this. It, there is a heading right above each yeah. one of these. So, Wampatuck, Gates Art Adopted, uh, Memorial Gifts, um, K9, Fire Contributions, Council on Aging, uh, Library, Recreation, and Town Scholarships. So, and the total is $45,752. Okay, I understand it now. So we have a, a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Yes, thank you all very much. Um, hey, Sean. I didn't see your name on that list, Sean. I asked that they don't put it on. <laughs> Anonymous. <Yeah. laughs> His name is Anon. Um, item number seven, a one-day wine and malt beverages license. I have a motion. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license to the GAR Hall for Saturday, February 23rd, 2013, from 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m., and further grant five licenses to be held for short-term booking events. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? So what, what family is that, John? I can't read that. I figured, uh, Tony, you might be able to pronounce the, uh, no. That's Second. Fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number eight, acceptance of the resignation. Um, Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of William Logan from the Economic Development Committee. Further, the Board thank Mr. Logan for donating his time and expertise to the committee and the town. Second. Second by Mr. Danahy. Um, he wrote us a letter saying that his, his work has caused him to have to travel more, so he's unable to um, be on the committee anymore. Thank you, Bill. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. It is unanimous. Um, item number nine is uh, other business. Mr. Chair. Yes. I have a piece of other business regarding the MBTA. I was very upset to have this sort of situation happen, but it just shows how out of touch with regular citizens the MBTA is. And even though the governor is working hard on trying to smooth out and improve public transportation with policies like this, it makes one wonder what the heck's going on. Stories is this, the other day it was snowing and so I took the train in right here at the Greenbush lot and there was enough snow on the ground that it covered up the numbers of the parking spot. And when this happens, usually what you do is you don't pay because you don't know where to put your money and you come back that night and there's a little envelope on your windshield and you put your money in the little envelope and you put the little envelope in a box. I came back that night and instead I found a parking ticket asking me to not only pay the four dollars which i'm fine with because that was my parking fee but also to pay a one dollar late fee and there was an appeal spot located you could go to the web and write an appeal so i went to the web that night and wrote an appeal you have a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> you need a dollar tony it's the principal thing because it gets better it gets better the dollar and the stamp so, and stamps are expensive these days. So anyways, but I sent out, I sent to my appeal. And then on January 31st, a couple days later, and this is important, January 31st at 6.02 p.m. I got an email back from the MBTA that said, your appeal is denied. <laughs> and you have to pay your $5 and it has to be postmarked by January 31st. Otherwise, your fee is going to increase. Now, I got that email at 6.02 p.m. after it was physically impossible for me to get something postmarked on that day. And so I just, it just showed to me, and this was from the parking company that the MBTA has chartered out to in Tarrytown, New York. So they can't even charter out into our own, our own commonwealth. And so now I'm on the hook for some certain amount of money because this horrific agency can't get their act together when it snows. And I've heard that although global warming is occurring, it does snow with some frequency in New England and in Massachusetts. So this might, this sort of thing might happen again. So I've written them a letter. I will dutifully report back informally so as to not take more of your time uh, in the future as to um, the status of my appeal of my appeal of my appeal. Um, and I wrote them a check for four dollars and mailed it in and with a copy of this and if it doesn't work I will also forward this on to the Cant Mr. Cantwell and the governor as the governor works very hard to further improve public transportation in our fair commonwealth. Thank you Mr. Chair. MBTA, what up? Excuse me. Any other, uh, any other, other business? I will pass. 
that, I do, do you not. have any violin stories? No. <laughs> John, really? Okay. I, uh, I was trying to think of Just uh, two quick things. Um, one thing is uh, our high school basketball teams are doing great. The girls were ranked in the top 20 this year in the state, and the boys just won last week to go to qualify for the state tournament. They play every Tuesday and Friday night, so go show them, uh, show your support. And uh, the hockey team is also doing well. Um, the coach, uh, Mike Breen, was here tonight. I should have asked him more about it. Um, secondly, um, there is a fundraiser this weekend for Andrea's auction, oh, that's right. which is um, Saturday night at Barker Tavern. Um, Barker Tavern. Thanks, John. It's a great um, event where they sell uh, artwork from local artists, and it all goes to. Um, um, and what's the fun, what's the name of the actual? Andrea Gaziano. Yeah, the, the yeah. foundation. Yeah. Andrea yeah. Gaziano's foundation. So um, if you're looking for something to do and looking for some great artwork, I outbid Trisha last year on a piece that I later got outbid on. But um, it is a, a great event at the Barker. Um, show up if you can. Any other? That being said, we'll move on to num item number oh, 10. Actually, you know what? Move the uh, Board of Selectmen vote to accept. Um, the amended regular session minutes of April 24th, 2012, and January 22nd, 2013. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Kim, I'm abstaining from the second one because I was not there at that time. So 4-0 for the first one and 3-0 on the second one. Number 10, a motion to adjourn and sign documents. Move the board selectmen uh, adjourn the meeting at... 10, 9, 42, 42 p.m. and signed documents. Second, Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much and good night. folks. Here's the email. I didn't realize it was a buck. <laughs> it's like you got nailed for like a third dollar. <laughs> oh, it was a buck. It's like a buck. I'm like, oh god. No, but but no, but because it was the. Uh, You'll get your money back. No, no, but because it was after. Time, because it was after the other one. Now it's twenty bucks. Don't send the Twenty. Will do. It'll be the. They, they said. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. Now yeah. guess what they give to me. Now I got.